this Saturday morning marked the first time that no cartoons aired on an American broadcast channel. The last channel still showing cartoons. Hold the plug. Cartoons were the dominant. Good morning. It's 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's Saturday. You know what that means. It's time for Saturday Morning Serials. As always, I'm your host, the Captain, bringing you the platoon, the best in cartoons, from years gone by. Yesterday, last week, we did some big guns. Um, this week, we're doing some more big guns. Man, some of the, some of the prime examples of 80s animation and 70s animation. So... Hang in there, hold it back, sit down, be ready. So, the captain has been busting his butt this week. Got a lot going on. Uh, took the took the Admiral Tina to a concert down in Kentucky. Uh, it was a hell of a trip, fun trip. Got to see Stevie Nicks. Uh, that was one of the the Tina's favorites. Um, I just make sure my wife goes to whatever she wants to do and. You know, she loves this stuff. So, I go do what I want to do. She does what she wants to do. Sometimes we do it together. So, all right. So, I've been busting my butt this week trying to figure out something to, to mix up the episodes. But, uh, man, some of these are too good to, to take off here yet. So, I'm going to let them run for a little while and then I'm going to go back to some old stuff. But, here we go. Is brought to you by RU Game, the best comic book, collectible, video game, magic, role playing, toy store located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle Ohio, 45356. As the captain has to. Not 100%, man. I'm back now. I feel great. I've got like all kinds of energy, energy to burn. But. The captain's nose is still running and it sucks. So I'm like, so you hear that? I'm sorry and I apologize because that sucks. So, all right. So you guys keep asking for it. And I keep going back to it every once in a while. But we're going back old school. And we're going back to 1970s. And we're going to bring you some more Josie and the Pussycats in outer space. Uh, it Fun cartoon, man great um still trying to figure out where the the pussy cats appear in the uh you know the mythos of what would be the chilling adventures universe so if you think about it let me know just saying but this is josie and the pussycats in space episode nine it says anything you can do anything you can zoo duh Instead of anything you can do, anything you can do. Exactly. So, hope you guys enjoy. Have fun. sure wish we knew where we're going. No wonder. I never saw so many gadgets and knobs in all my life. Just don't touch anything. That's all, Pussycat. Well, I'll bet I could fly this thing as well as any of you. Please, Alexandra, we've got enough trouble without arguing. Who's arguing? Watch this. Don't push that lever. Uh-oh. What did you do, Alexandra? <laughs> oh, sure. Always my fault. 
Crush the stabilizer control, Valerie. Neat maneuver, Alexandra. Really neat. I see what you mean. I might have known you'd be around. What's the matter, Bleep? Oh, my. What have we here? It looks like we have company. Aren't they cute? Gee, real flying saucers. Probably as cute as a couple of scorpions. Let's move out of here. That's a pretty tricky maneuver they're doing. And I don't like it. Those silly saucers are trying to snare us in that net. Trying? They just did. We're caught like space sardines. Then there was something fishy about those saucers. <laughs> At least we know where we're going. We're being pulled toward that freaky-looking planet below us. Look! Do we have to? Oh, oh! Look out! It's Jumbo City, gang! Hang on, everybody! Whee! It's like landing in a super salad! <laughs> Now where are we? You were right, Belle. This is a freaky-looking place. I wonder what puny planetoid this is. Intruders! <laughs> Ready? Uh-oh. You are all under arrest, Ready? Arrest? Uh, but we... What brings you to our planet, Ready? What brings us? That's a laugh. You did, you creep. Yeah, who do you think you are, sir? I am Minister of Defense for the planetoid of Calix, Ready? Big deal. It sounds like a mouthwash. Just what do you intend to do with us? We will take you to the mighty Throg, Biddy. And just who is this mighty Throg? Just like Glob, Throg rhymes with frog. <laughs> Silence. Throg is our ruler, Biddy. He is all powerful on this planet. He will decide your fate. Come, Biddy. Oh, at least he didn't mention Quoak. I don't think I want to go. I don't think we have much choice, for now. Well, I'm not afraid of any frog-faced character. I'll show him a thing or two. Let's go. Wait till I see that king of the swamp. At least you got to admit that Mr. Frog's space saucers are super. Oh, great. I see that Josie has managed to sit next to Alan. Again. And I drew a blank. I'm not a blank. Want to bet? Zero, big O, nothing. <laughs> oh, very funny. Hey, gang, look, buildings. Wow, what a housing project. I don't see any mushrooms for rent signs. <laughs> Prepare to meet our powerful leader, Reedy. These are the invaders of our planet, almighty oh, frog, Reedy. Invaders? But your majesty. Invaders, my foot. You netted us like so many butterflies. Silence! Where do you come from? We're from the planet Earth, sir. That's where people look like people. <laughs> cool it, Melody. Watch your manners. So, you are from the planet Earth. These Earthlings can be of use to you, Excellency. Biddy. Yes. They make my plans practically foolproof. Plans? What plans could we possibly help with? Whatever they are, you can count me out. Uh, me too. Anyway, I don't count. I'm a blank. Your planet Earth has certain minerals that we lack here on Kalex. But the mighty Throg has devised a clever plan to correct this condition. Really? Don't tell me. Let me guess. You're going to invade Earth. Ah, uh, then you know. Somehow. The other freakouts we've met have the same nutty idea. Silence, Biddy. No one speaks to the great frog in such a manner. Well, I just did, Flippo. Because we are different in appearance. These Earth people think we are simple. <laughs> Show them just how simple we are, oh mighty frog. Show them your master plan, Biddy. Aliens! Look behind you and be amazed. Whee! It's show and tell time. <laughs> Behold the mighty frog's master plan for invading your Earth, Biddy. You're going to invade Earth in this? It's a metal monster. It'll never get off the ground. Huh. Therein lies the beauty of my plan. I am not 
not going to invade your Earth in the usual sense. What do you mean? I remain here. I shall give Earth an ultimatum. Surrender to me, or be bombarded with millions of small asteroids hurled to Earth by this space robot. Ha! Huh. I told you it was a nutty idea. See if you can laugh after this, scoffers. What's happening? Yo! I think the sky is falling. Beep, 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 beep. Cut out. <laughs> Enough? <laughs> you can say that again. What a fallout. That was some kind of demonstration. A scary kind. What a machine. I'll bet it plays records and fries eggs, too. <laughs> Yeah, what do you do for an encore? A little rock music, huh? Huh? <laughs> I intend to make a thorough study of these Earthlings. After that, I shall know exactly how they react to any situation. Just what do you mean by a careful and thorough study? Yeah, just what does that mean? We're not guinea pigs, you know. We're people. Bleep, beep, beep, beep. Bleep is a bleep. This interesting furry one. I shall keep as my pet. Meow. Guard, take it away. Meow. And this one shall act as my personal servant. Beep, 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 beep. Me? Oh, my. I'm an awful cook. Unless you like brownies. What about the rest of us? Ah, oh, yes. You shall be kept in my zoo. Your, Your zoo? zoo? You're not keeping me in any zoo like a monkey, you fugitive from a lily pad. He's not keeping any of us. Let's give him the old whirling dervish routine. Lock arms, gang. Guards, seize them! Ready, set, go! Stop them! Stop them! <laughs> We gave him the slip that time. Is that you, Alan, dear? I'd know those shoulders anywhere. <laughs> sure you would. Oh, no. Not again. Why don't you get lost for a change? Beep, 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 beep. Uh-oh. We're in a jam. Then I'm getting out of this jar. There they are! We have them! Come! We rush them! Beep, what beep, is it, Bleep? Beep, beep, beep. Gotta find a better way to get around it on foot. It's too slow and dangerous. Look in there. That ought to give us a lift. Hey, they look like mini spaceships. They are. Come on, let's go. Well, we got wheels. Yeah, and we got something else. Trouble and lots of it. Stay close and let's go. Climb fast. Maneuver, Alan. It was super. I see another city over there. Welcome to Toadstool Towers. We can hide among these buildings. I wonder if we've really lost them at last. Maybe, but not for long. You can be sure of that. Come on, follow me. I'll show you how to duck these flying frogs. Move over. Now wait, sis. Wait for what? We ought to check the territory. Well, I'm checking out. We better find out where out is first. Yikes! That's not it! Look! That's them! The aliens! Sound the alarm! Read it, read it, read it. Oh, now you've done it, Alexandra. You brought Throg's whole frog force down on us. Beep, 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 beep! Huh? Where, where? Uh-oh, here they come. Yo, let's get out of here! And fast! Come on, this way! 
Watch out for those flying nets. You fly and we'll watch, Alan. They're getting closer, Alan. Ready to move. Lift. Well, that's getting too close for comfort. Dive. Watch out for that water. Let's see how they like a little dousing. Don't do anything foolish, Alexandra. Relax. This will cool them off. We're gonna hit... Whoa! Good move, Alexandra. But come on, we gotta get out of here. Others are coming at us. I give them the old. Uh oh, calm down. Oh, they're dropping fast. Come on, Alexandra. Nice going. We're going nowhere. Stop moving your liver lips. Hurry up. Oh, Alan, they're caught. We got it. He... Oh, that's all. You just love my loot, Your Majesty. Enough. Your after dinner music gives me indigestion. We have brought back the runaways, as you see, O oh mighty Throg. So, you thought you could escape from Throg? Well, we're back. Now, what are you going to do with us? Put us in a zoo. That's what. No. I have decided to keep you close by, where I can personally observe you. Thanks, Melody. This food looks great. Now, what's this about a circus? Oh, yeah. It's too bad you'll have to miss it. I wouldn't want to go to Throg's dumb circus anyhow. You're going to this one. We all are. What are you talking about? Do you have a plan? Now, look. The first thing we've got to do, if we're going to escape, is get out of this cage, right? Right. Yes. Right. Okay. We have Melody tell Throg about this terrific musical group called Josie and the Pussycats. They'd be a great act for a circus. Oh, I see. And once we're at the circus, we make a break for it and head back to our spaceship. Right. Oh, Alan, you're so smart. You would never have thought of that, Josie. It sounds like it could be dangerous to me. You'll do as Alan says, or I'll fix you. Bleep, we'll need you in this, too. Beep, beep, beep. Now, Melody, this whole thing depends on you. Now, first, you've got to con Throg into letting the Pussycats play. Then have him bring the instruments from the spaceship. Think you can remember all that? Oh, sure. Nothing to it. <laughs> uh, what was the first part again? Oh, boy. Good luck to us. You can do it, Melody. Remember, this all depends on you. Well, Melody came through for us. This gig is going to be billed as Josie and the Pussycats plus three. Since we've all got to get out together, Alex, Alexandra, and I will fake it and pretend to be part of the act. Huh. The others have been faking it for years. Something's happening. Sounds like Throg Circus is about to begin. There are two frogs on that platform. <laughs> It's an upside-down routine. Fantastic! Now that is the goofiest high-wire act I've ever seen. Oh, yeah? Take a look at that flipped-out frog under the trampoline. Well, now I've seen everything, I think. Have you met your relatives, the clowns? They don't look very amusing. Oh, but they look kind of familiar. I don't see anything funny about that. You, maybe, but certainly not me. Your face is getting more laughs as usual. <laughs> Get a glance at those Pinocchio ponies. Come along, Froggity rides again. Huh. Bring on the Earth, people. Okay, Pussycats, hit it! Hey, did you have yourself a day? Hey, did you make each minute pay? Did you run, did you seek, did you find? So this is what they call music. 
What do you think of it, mighty throg? Well, it is loud. I'll say that for it. Okay, Bleep. Now! Now's our chance! The lights! What happened? Look over there. It was a trick. They have escaped. Ready? Clear the arena! Find them and bring them to me! At once! That's as good a way as any. Let's go! Guards! Guards! spaceship, of course. But what about Throg's invasion machine? If we leave it the way it is, he could use it against Earth any time. Oh, you're right. We'll take care of it before we go. There's Throg's place just ahead. Yeah, but what's the plan, Alan? Ever hear of Destruction Derby? Beep, 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 beep. Right on. I get the idea. Brace yourselves. This thing's on its last legs. Now, cut out! I'm with you, sis. Don't worry. We've left Throg and his friends far, far behind by now. What's that? <laughs> yeah, what? Oh, no! Throg! How did he get here? Sebastian, you! The old mask on the cat bit. Well, you can say we had the last laugh on Throg. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go home. Why crunch berries are special? You bet! Cause Captain Crunch only picks sweet, yummy, special berries like us! Packing my crunch berry cereal. Mm, very delicious! Yay, crunch berries! Crunch berries are a very sweet part of a balanced breakfast. When you got a big taste for bubble gum, you can follow the captain and get yourself some. Two whole packs. That'll blow you away. And peanut butter crunch. Or crunch berries, hey! Rainbow bubble gum. Especially marked by. Where are you going with those stripes? That's Aqua Fresh for kids. Just follow me. Toothpaste? I hate to brush. <laughs> Aqua Fresh for kids makes brushing fun. It's got a zingy taste kids love. Mm. Fluoride, too, and it's easy to pump and has a neat top. Great, right, but how are you going to get those stripes in there? <laughs> Watch. Aqua Fresh for kids. I make brushing fun. My McDonald's Happy Meal, please. Thank you. My McDonald's Happy Meal, please. Rubble, rubble. Hamburglar, you've really become attached to that McDonald's Happy Meal. <laughs> Here come the frag 
Fraggles in their vegetable cars. And you can get either Gobo Fraggle or Red or Boober and Wembley or Moki when you buy a McDonald's Happy Meal featuring Fraggle Rock. Fraggle Rock toys at McDonald's. So I hope you guys are still digging Josie and the Pussycats. I know I do. I still like it. It's still a fun cartoon. And this is for you that still enjoy it. That are here every morning. Every Saturday morning just to watch Josie. There you go. So, we're going to keep it going. And we're going to a cartoon that aired a few weeks ago. And the first episode. And I'm going back to that. Because we're going to do episode two. But we're going to do Toxic Crusaders. Yet again, another rated R movie that somebody decided to need to be a kid's cartoon. Um, very much in the style of, you know, Captain Planet and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They're fighting to save the environment. And there's weird, wacky characters and stuff like that. So, it's, it's definitely a product of his time. And the fact that, that Lloyd Kaufman introduces the episodes make it even that much better. Uh, Lo Uncle Lloyd, one of the coolest cats you will ever meet in your entire life. He loves his fans. Uh, I hadn't seen him in years. And uh, I walked up to him and I was like, man, I, was like, I haven't seen you since like 97 or 98. He goes, man, you don't look a day older. And I know he was full of shit. Or shoot, full of crap. Sorry for all you kids watching cartoons first thing in the morning. That's on me. My bad. So. He, 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 was, he was going with it, and that's funny. So, I want you guys to enjoy Toxic Crusaders, Episode 2, and that's Spuds for you. Enjoy. Is that Toxie? Yes, that's right. The Toxic Crusaders work for the environment. That's right. They're good cartoons, and they, they're environmental. Oh, greetings from Tromaville, kiddies. I'm your Uncle Lloydy, and welcome to the lovingly recreated DVD of the original TV show, The Toxic Crusaders. Yes, you know, these cartoons were created long before you were born, before your mommy and daddy found you under a cabbage leaf. Yes, back in the 80s, The Toxic Crusaders were on their way to becoming a huge success like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Do you know what syndication means? Yes, this cartoon show should have gone into syndication and I would have become a very rich man. Toxie was well on his way to becoming a household word and we were going to have all this great merchandise to shill. And then the evil men from the big corporations came and they took Toxie away. Can you say devil worshipping international media conglomerate? Yes children, due to a conspiracy Toxie was taken off the air. But luckily 13 half hours are beautifully preserved here in the happiest land of Tromaville. And you can watch them on this beautiful, beautiful DVD. Can you say independent company? That's right, independent company, because due to those very bad men, soon Uncle Lloydy will have no work and there will be no independent companies left. And Uncle Lloydy will be coming to you asking for a job. So please help Uncle Lloydy and Watch the beautifully preserved DVD of The Toxic Crusader. And don't forget to watch some of those great Christmas cartoons that you'll also find here. Well, kids, it's time for Uncle Lloydy to go and cash his welfare check. Bye, kids. Bye.
just beautiful, Yvonne. Anybody see my hanky? I've got it. My hanky? No, the answer to our problems. I found jobs for all of us. Jobs? Why do we need jobs anyway? We're the toxic crusaders. Yes, but superheroing isn't a very high-paying profession. And the landlord wants his rent. It's medical benefits, stay. Uh, anything for a hideously deformed creature with superhuman size and strength? Sort of. This ad calls for someone who loves children and doesn't mind getting messy. Close enough. Yvonne, this job calls for a person with a warm heart and superior musical skills. <laughs> Perfect. Looking for someone who really wants to clean up. Forget it, Mop. This one is mine. Oh, here's one for me. Earn big pay, no heavy lifting. What about me? Well, how about this? Looking for someone who is outgoing and has a large nose. It's a stretch, but I'll try. <laughs> A bicycle wheel has a spoke. The white of an egg is the... Albumin. Yolk. I'm sorry, Leo. The answer is the albumin. If I wasn't a bad guy, I could really clean up on these shows. I don't like to kill him off. But stop to kill him off to you. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm sorry, uh, Dr. Killamorph. It won't happen again. Anyway, like I was saying, I don't like to kill him. I, I mean, Dr. Killamorph. You're talking about messing with the food that little kids love to eat. I'll give you half the profits. Dale, I hate kids anyway. This is perfect. Everyone in Tromoville eats a purple burger. Yeah, they got great fries. Exactly. And once I adjust those fries to my evil purpose, I'll control the people of Tromoville. Then no one can stop me from polluting this disgustingly clean little town. And once I pollute Tromoville, the rest of the world is mine. What happens if one of the Toxic Crusaders gets a job at Burpo Burger and foils your plan? Impossible! Imagine a Toxic Crusader working at Burpo Burger. Ridiculous. My plan is flawless. <laughs> even now, even Dr. Bender is working on the most dastardly part of my plan. <laughs> Here, my friend, one taste of this, and you'll turn into a forgetful, near-sighted old rat. No, no, this is the 81st patch, and it still isn't right. I need to test this right away. I need a human guinea pig. I need... Aha! Hey, Stretch. This is where the evil genius Dr. Bender hangs? Yes, yes! I'm the evil genius Dr. Bender. Cool. I got a telegram from a Dr. Kilimoff. How touching! He remembered my birthday. And that's more than I can say for my evil genius mother. Here's a little message just for you. Don't dilly tally, I need the kill. If you fail, you'll die today. Sincerely yours, Dr. K. What kind of a birthday greeting is that? Hey, I don't write them. I just sing them. Yeah, no matter. Have some soup. No thanks, Doc. I'm a vegetarian. Why don't you just give me a tip and we'll call it even? Ah! Look out! Oh, I hate this job, man. Ah, look out! The Adam Smasher! Don't touch anything! And turn off that infernal radio! Hey, it's your telegram. He can't! The Atom Smasher made us into one person! So unsmash us, man! I don't know how! Bummer. It's gonna be a little tough picking up chicks. Say, do you like sushi, Doc? I can't wait. I'm really gonna clean up in this job. You sure are. And you can start by dusting the window display. Yo, lady, should I start here? Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. 
It's become a forgetful, nearsighted old rat. Like I always say, the 82nd time's the charm. Oh, what is that goo? This isn't just any goo. This is... Ah, my arm! What's wrong with my arm? It doesn't work. Sure it does. Hi, Doc. Hi. Oh, as I was saying, this isn't just any goo. Anyone who eats it will turn into a forgetful, nearsighted old person. Pull off that paper. I call it McGoop 82. Gross. Why'd you make it? Because it's exactly what Dr. Killamoff ordered. <laughs> oh, give to the poor. Give, cause it's right. If you don't give some now, you're a big butt. Now, there's enough for everyone. Oops, I'll get another. Now be careful with that stuff, huh? Spread it good all over the potatoes. Mm. Thanks, Flossie. I always hated this shirt. Now I won't have to wear it anymore. Glad I could help. Flossie, it's Mama Chauncey acting up. Oh, they sure are. I better find out why fast. It's working perfectly. In just a few moments, my radiation rangers will have spread the Magoo 82 over the whole potato patch, setting my plan into full swing. I don't know. What if the Toxic Crusaders' traumatons start acting up and he shows up and beats all our guys to a pulp? Don't be a fool! Bonehead is in charge, and I know I'm going to be proud of him. Dr. Killamoff's gonna be proud of me. Maybe I'll get a promotion. Maybe I'll get a raise. Maybe he'll stop slapping me around. It's Killamoff's Radiation Rangers. They're polluting the potato patch with toxic chemicals. That's un-American. You gotta stop them, Toxie. Right. You know what you need? Uh, good luck, Kiss. Uh-uh. A battle cry. I do? Uh-huh. Something to yell before you do battle that'll strike fear in the hearts of your enemies. Something like, it's clobbering time, or hi-ho, silver! Hmm. Uh, wait, I got it. I hope I don't get hurt! <sighs> we'll work on it. Look out! It's a toxic crusader! Stop him! Yeah, now finish off this toxic troublemaker! Oh, man, now what? <laughs> Mashed potatoes! You gotta do better than that to beat me! What's this? Hey, what happened? Yeah, what happened? The mashed potatoes, they must have clogged up the intake vents on his life support system. He's overheating! Oh, yeah! Oh, don't you coward! Poor Ryder! Back in the truck, Fred! Hey, you think you won, don't you? Well, go have some purple fries on me! Happy <laughs> you beat him! No, I mashed him. Whatever. I wonder what they were up to. Don't worry, Toxie. I'm sure we'll find out in Act Two. Yeah. Why do they call them purple burgers, Dad? Ah, uh, don't ask. Hi, kids. It's me, Burpo Magicians. And we're gonna have fun. Burpo is my name. Illusions are my game. And if you think I really think I'll say you think the same. Ta-da! Oh boy, a tough crowd. Hi, kids. How about some balloon animals? Ta da! It looks like a foot. Well, uh, it is a foot. You know how hard it is to sculpt body parts? I wonder when I get a coffee break. A 
Okay, this is the first patch of purple fries made from potatoes treated with Macoop 82. Cool, purple fries are the best. Nah, don't eat those, fool, or we'll turn into forgetful, nearsighted old men. Yuck, I thought they just made you fat. Enough talk. I want results. Show me that it works. Chill, Chief. We told the staff here not to eat any of the new burpo fries because they were extra special. So what? So, of course, they ate them right away. Hey, let's see you go. Oh, oh, here. Oh. Excellent. Um, excuse me, Chubby. Do you know where the restroom is? Hell. Find it yourself, old man. Uh, find what? Uh, the rest of the purple fries will be ready this afternoon. Perfect! Soon all of Trolloville will be full of forgetful, nearsighted old people, and nothing will stop me from making this town my pollution headquarters. Suburban Branch. Like I said before, what if one of the Toxic Crusaders gets a job here and discovers your plan? Ridiculous! What are the odds of that happening? They love me. I'm a hit. Uh-oh. Looks like the odds are pretty good. I don't suppose you guys would like some balloon edibles. Ice cream! Ice cream! Get it before it gets away! How's business, Toxie? Oh, terrible. No one likes warm ice cream. How's your job, Major Disaster? I got fired just because I broke a couple of bowls. I lost my job, too. They didn't appreciate good music. John! This is great! I've been going door to door, and I sold five of these babies already. You might say I'm sweeping the town. That's great, Mom. What's your secret? I just get in the house, and I tell them it's so heavy that I might have a heart attack if they make me take it out again. <laughs> it's the old sympathy game. I thought the job said no heavy lifting. This is nothing! You should see the deluxe model. Gotta run, lots more to sell. Let's go see how Nozone is doing at Burpo Burger. I always wondered why this place had such bad service. Excuse me, have you seen our friend Nozone? Yeah, you, you mean the funny-looking guy with the big nose who sneezes all the time? Yeah. Yeah, never saw him. So where is he? I could be wrong, but I think he was taken to the laboratory of an evil genius scientist. How do you know that? Because it says so right here. We took your friend to the laboratory of the evil genius Dr. Bender. Come and get him. It's signed, your pal, Dr. Kilimoff. Eat it, magician. It's good for you. Hey, if it's that good, I'll eat it myself. Are you always this stupid? I don't know. Let me think. <laughs> Never mind. Come on. What are you doing? Don't worry. We're just getting ready for your friends. They should be here any minute. Cool. A party. I'll make the dip. You are the dip. Yay! The good guys! Whoa! Do something! I'm trying! I'm trying! Wow, what a ride! You're not a very nice guy. Or couple of guys. Or whatever you are. Hey, how about some wrinkle cream, Toxic Crusader? Throw it! No, he's a cool superhero. Throw it! No! Oh! All right already. I wish you'd stop doing that. <laughs> Holy cow! Oh, you idiot! <sighs> oh, I give up. You did it! I did. I'm saved! I'm dead. Yoo-hoo, Toxic Crusader! I'm in here! I hope I don't get hurt! Yvonne's right. It needs work. Sneaky, Doc. Very sneaky. <laughs> I'm too young to be old. Hang on, buddy. <laughs> Hurry! Oh, doesn't look good, Doc. 
It's good to be Toxy. Hey, now that's catchy. Let's get out of here. Help! It thinks I'm lost. Hold on, no zone. We're coming. Thanks, Toxy. It was getting awful hot in there. My hero. What in blazes is going on here, Nozone? It's this goo. It turns people into forgetful, nearsighted old folks. Say, this looks like the stuff Bonehead was spraying on the potatoes in Act One. That's right. And you know what they make out of potatoes, don't you? Sweaters? No, purple fries. The next time they eat, they'll be ordering off the seniors menu. Special on purple fries. Two for one. Get your purple fries. Good. It's not too late. Yeah, no one's eaten any bad fries yet. The Toxic Crusaders! You guys mind the store. I've got an evil plan to carry out. Attention, everyone. The evil genius Dr. Bender has put a chemical on the burple fries. If you eat them, you'll turn into forgetful, nearsighted old folks. Baloney! Hey, it works! I'm amazing. I'm an evil genius. Evil genius, huh? Hey, hiya, Toxy. Say, what's going on here, anyway? Is it Senior Citizen's Day or something? Not now, Yvonne. I'm trying to beat up on a bad guy. Okay, Mr. Evil Genius. And the other guy, prepare to be seriously hurt. Uh, yeah, yeah, in a minute. Who's the rad babe? Who, Yvonne? She's my beautiful, though somewhat light, girlfriend. You've got a girlfriend? I may be a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength, but I am a good guy. I knew we should have been a good guy. The bad guys never get the checks. That's the first smart thing you've said this whole episode. Say, ready for that beating now? Ah, uh, forget that. We want to be good guys now. Yeah, we want to be toxic crustaceans like you guys. As long as we get to hang out with cool babes like Yvonne. Well, I can't promise anything, but she does have a sister. Good enough. We're good guys now. Not so fast. I mean, you're certainly hideously deformed enough, but I think you should at least come up with an antidote to help all these poor people before we let you be a toxic crustacean. Crusader. Whatever. But there is no antidote. I just love purple fries. If anybody wants some... You are! No! Hey, there's something wrong with these fries. Whoa! Whoa. They taste like... like... Oh, I don't get it. She ate the same fries as everyone else. Yeah, how come she's not old? I'll tell you a secret. I don't eat them plain. I like to put pepper on them. That's it. Pepper. Pepper is the antidote. It turns the Magoop 82 into bubblegum. I'm pretty tasty at that. Okay, I found the antidote. So are we toxic crusaders or what? Well, actually, Yvonne found the antidote, but what the hey? Rad! Attention, everyone! Put pepper on your fries and you'll turn back to normal! We'll help them later. We gotta stop Dr. Killamoff from spraying all the vegetables with the Goop 82. Even the broccoli? Yep, even the broccoli. Ooh, now I am mad. In a few minutes, every vegetable will be covered with Magoop 82, and Trumbleville will be mine! Unless the Toxic Crusaders come up with an antidote. You know, I'm really sick of you. <gasps> We're too late. We'll never stop them. We're not done yet. What's that? Pepper. Oh, no. I hate pe pe pepper. Ready? Drop! Trumbleville is mine! Next stop, the world! <laughs> Give it all you got, buddy! <laughs> What's that? What's that? It looks like bees! It looks like antidote to me. No! No! Yes! Yes! You saved the vegetables. Even the broccoli. I hope everyone likes their vegetables well done. 
I hate those toxic crusaders. Now that you're a uh, toxic crusader, what do we call you? Well, I'm Fender. I'm Fender. Gee, that kind of confusing. We need just one name for both of you. Ow! Ow! Ha, that's it. We'll call you Headbanger. Why? And although it looks like none of us can hold down real jobs, except Mom, of course, we have our newest crusader to thank for inventing the product that's going to make us all rich and famous. Gentlemen, introducing the newest, the best, the coolest bubblegum ever invented. We call it Macoop 83. I even know that new jingle. Oh, yeah, let's go, baby, free. It's a bubblegum for me. A bubble big and bold, and it won't make you old. Oh, yeah, my go, baby, free. What? I heard a noise. Oh, it's not Nani. Oh. There it is again. What? It's that noise again. When you go back to sleep, I told you it's not Nani. There's no mistaking that nut and honey taste. Crisp flakes of corn smothered in sweet honey and roasted peanuts. Now I suppose that was nut and honey. Nope. Kellogg's nut and honey. That was the milk. Crunch. An innocent discovery. I wouldn't touch that if I were you. A powerful weapon. I want that rocket. A deadly conspiracy. They're working for a Nazi agent. An extraordinary adventure. Come on. Jenny's in trouble. We got the girl. Here it comes. The rocket will come to us. I'm only going to get one pass at this. The Rocketeer. Rated PG. Now playing at a theater near you. Check newspapers for showtimes. My lord, the killer was eating cookies. Quite right. But my client doesn't eat cookies. She eats fig newtons. Case dismissed. A cookie is just a cookie, but newtons are fruit and cake. I say, Drusilla, these cookies are stupendous. Great Scott, Trevor. They're not cookies. They're fig newtons. Terribly sorry. Most embarrassing blunder. A cookie is just a cookie, but newtons are fruit and cake. Yep. Yeah. I keep telling everybody this. Remember, always fill out your order books. Go to your local comic book store and fill out your previews. It'll save you from missing out on stuff. That's all I'm saying. Just fill it out. So, <clears throat> hope you guys are still digging Toxic Crusaders. I you know I do. It's a weird, wonky cartoon. Uh, but I don't think I'd expect anything less from Toxic Avenger and Lloyd Kaufman. So... <clears throat> Speaking of which, we're just going to go semi-adjacent, and we're going over here to TMNT. That's right, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Their heroes in a half shell. Turtle power. They're the world's most fearsome fighting team. Heroes in a half shell. And they're green. <laughs> I better not sing too much more of that, because I will get in trouble. No, I can do whatever I want. So... This is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is episode three. And this is the thing about rats. After these messages. Captain O.G. Reedmore here. I've got a great suggestion for fun that's out of sight. Get the family together for a family reading night. Turn Grandma in to Captain Hook. Let Dad play Gunga again. Get your favorite book, give out the parts, and let the fun begin. It's hilarious. <laughs> and it's easy. And it's great for any weather. Read a book tonight. You'll see I'm right. <laughs> reading is so together. The Transformers, more than meets the eye. Power Zenkai, Cybertron Soshiekum, Kumboi Hashim. 
君の知らない超ロボットバトル今始まる作戦を指揮するのは君だガンジコンガンジガンバルコンバイメガトロンを倒せ負けるものだ戦え超ロボット生命体トランスフォーマー God loves some teenage mutant ninja turtles and Uh, I'm currently reading the uh, uh, Last Ronin, The Lost Years. Um, not nowhere near as good as The Last Ronin,、uh, but man, I don't think you could do much better than that. that that's, that's a book that's, that's, that's a pretty good book. That's what I'm saying. So, I hope you guys dig it because we're going to one of my all time favorite cartoons. I showed you the first episode last week. Uh, we're bringing you more The Amazing Spider Man.、Um, yet again, it was released、uh, almost simultaneously with、uh, Spider Man's Amazing Friends and the Incredible Hulk cartoon.、Um, I think it's weird that, yes, they were released on VHS tape,、uh, but they're released overseas on DVD and never released in the United States on DVD. And I, I, I don't understand why. I, I don't get that. If anyone can explain that to me, let me know. Because it's just weird. But、um, I'm not going to lie. This is Spider Man、uh, is episode two. I'm just going to leave it at that.、Um, one of my favorite cartoons.、Uh, it's great. I mean, the animation was pretty good for the time. Uh, they, they, they embrace like every villain and、uh, lots of heroes. So, here you go. Let's go. This is Spider Man episode two. Enjoy. Spider Man. Speech for the emergency meeting of the United Nations tonight. See that the Secretary of State gets a copy. Engine boosters to full power. Air Force One will soon be ours. Like I made it in time. And if I can get some good pictures of the president, I may be able to make a couple of extra bucks. Not to mention, prove to my sweet old publisher, JJ, that I can take decent shots of someone other than Spider Man. Say, any word on when Air Force One is supposed to arrive? Haven't you heard? The president's jet is half an hour overdue. This could be the biggest story of the year. And it could be just the kind of story that needs Spider Man to see that it has a happy ending. Fast before someone sees me. Good old spider webbing. The next best thing to a clothes closet. I don't understand it. Air Force One has just disappeared. 
disappeared. It's off the radar screen. Last position was somewhere over Jersey City. Better contact the White House. Hmm, whatever went wrong, the answer must be in Jersey City. Maybe Spidey can find the president, even though I didn't vote for him. It'll take too long to reach Jersey by web swinging. Maybe I can rent a plane around here. Can I help you, Sonny? The name's Wilbur Moses. This is my old-time air museum. Say, hey, that's a mighty fancy new astronaut suit you're wearing. <laughs> yeah, uh, say, Pop, any way I can hire a plane and pilot? Oh, you're in luck, mister. I'll fly you myself. That's luck? <laughs> you're darn right. I'm a World War I flying ace. Well, listen, I shot down 23. That's of the... great, but uh, how much? Gonna cost you $20 an hour. 20 bucks? All I got is a uh, dollar ninety-eight. That'll get you ten minutes. Come on. That'll give me time to finish the story. We're flying in that? You darn tootin'. What'd you expect? The Starship Enterprise? Well, at least I got a window seat. Never catch my blimp on radar with my anti-radar shield. Robot K-12, activate surgical computer. Once I've attached this remote mind implant, the president's thoughts will be under my control. is tingling. That means danger's near. Wow, look at the size of that. It's some sort of a futuristic blimp. There's only one man I know who could create an overgrown balloon like that. Hey, Lindbergh! You gotta get me closer to that blimp! Whatever you say! way of saying hello. Hey! You know something? If I didn't know better, I'd begin to think you don't want to be friends. I'll just use this pipe to... Uh-oh! You're no pipe! Okay. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Since you both feel like fighting, here, be my guest. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta see a man about a plane. Aha! Hi, the jackpot. Wrong, web swinger. You're at the mercy of your deadliest enemy. Dr. Doom! Gosh, I wish I'd brought my autograph book. Your attempts at humor bore me, Spider-Man. Fortunately, I won't have to listen to them much longer. Right, Leadhead, because I'm going to stop you right here and now. You never learn, do you? Plated gargoyle doesn't like me. Well, at least the president is all right. Or 
is he? Hmm. I can't believe Dr. Doom would have hijacked the president's jet just for the fun of it. Well, while I'm trying to figure it out, I might as well get some exclusive photos. Now that the Prez is safe, old Spidey better split while he has the chance. Oh, no. My clothes are gone. And I think I can guess what happened. Well, only one thing I can do. Other superheroes have ants who wait for them to come home at night. There. It is done. Now that the representative from South Africa has been mind-programmed, all of the world leaders on Earth are under my control, except for the Secretary General of the United Nations. Once I take care of him, I will electronically control all of the minds of the entire UN Assembly. And when they meet tomorrow in special session, I, Dr. Doom, shall be voted Master of the World. My plan is foolproof, but just in case this nuclear-powered flying robot will see to it that Spider-Man never bothers me again. never make it to the Daily Bugle in time for the morning deadline. And with my last dollar ninety-eight gone, I can't even afford a bus ride. Guess I'll just have to go by Spider-Man Express. Daily Bugle dead ahead. My spider line snapped. Now what do I do? I don't get it. My webbing is stronger than nylon. What could have cut it? Oh, there's the answer. Must be one of Dr. Doom's high-flying flunkies. Next time I want to get photos to the bugle, I'll just mail them in. Hmm, just my luck. A robot with a force feed. Listen, pal, I'm sure you must be lonely, but this is no way to win friends. Come on, Spidey, you can do it. Well, good thing I took my vitamins this morning. flying bucket of bolts took me by surprise. But my web shooter ought to rattle his rivets. Oh, no. It's jammed. Come on, webby baby. Do it. <sighs> Gotta unstick this thing or they'll need an eraser to get me off the pavement. Did it. People can't take no for an answer. Batter up! Doom should program his robots with better manners. He didn't even say goodbye. Hi, Betty. Oh, hi, Peter. Say, you're late. JJ's been asking about you. Listen, Betty, before he gets a chance to chew me out, I wonder if you'd give him these photos that I've taken of the, uh... Parker! You good-for-nothing excuse for a photographer. Where have you been? Uh, sorry, Mr. Jameson. I'm only an hour late. How would you like to buy some photos of the president? Forget it, Parker. My other photographers beat you to it. Oh, well, I guess that means you don't want these candid shots I took of the president just after his plane disappeared last night. <laughs> 
how'd you get those? Uh-uh. Remember our bargain. I never reveal my photo secrets. And, uh, speaking of secrets, what in the world is that thing in the back of the president's neck? Give me those photos. Now we're even for you being late. Excuse me, Mr. Jameson. All our reporters are on assignment. We've got no one to cover that special session of the U.N. today. Say, why don't I cover it, Uncle Jonah? Now, that's a fine idea, Mortimer. I'm glad I thought of it. <laughs> I wish you could be more like my nephew here, Parker. He's attentive, obedient, on time. Not to mention freaky, funky, and flaky. All right, good. You cover the U.N. meeting, Mortimer, and take Parker with you. You'll need a photographer. Right, Uncle Jonah. Maybe I can teach him something about good reporting. Now, you keep your eyes open, Parker. When I tell you, start snapping. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am risking my life to tell you of a grave matter which faces all members of the United Nations. And, and so it is with, with great concern that I must warn you that at this very moment there are among you... Uh, uh, you must listen. Many of the delegates among you have, have had their minds taken over. <laughs> What a story! <coughs> Start snapping, Parker! <coughs> oh! Only my super spider breath has kept me from passing out. They're abducting the Secretary General, and there's nothing I can do about it. As Peter Parker. Doom's blimp. Well, it figures he's behind all this. But I never thought he'd throw a party without inviting me. And I'll give it another try. But where you are going, there are no jokes. But the Secretary General and myself, I have other plans. Bon voyage, Spider-Man. Thanks. I'll send you a postcard. Oh, great. As if things weren't bad enough. Look where this bag of hot air is headed. Just shoot my web line and turn off that freeze ray. No way. I can't even turn my hand to point it in the right direction. Looks like curtains for my favorite web spinner. Web spinner? Hey, that's it. If I can fire a super hard wad of web fluid and punch a hole in the skin of this overgrown balloon, then the released air pressure will act as a jet. Blow the whole blimp away from Miss Liberty. Come on, Spidey Strength. Don't fail me now. Uh. Ah. Score one for the old web slinger. Now to get back to Doc Doom. Now 
that I am the appointed leader of all seven of Earth's continents. That's what you think, Tinhead. You forgot about your friendly neighborhood web spinner. You apparently do not understand, Spider-Man. I am now master of the world. Look, I don't care if you're master of Melvin's supermarket. No! get it. You weren't kidding. Correct, my web-headed friend. And there's nothing you can do about it. Guards, take this miserable traitor away. So, it's playtime again. Okay, guys, it takes two to tumble. Dr. Doom to robot leader G-97. Bring the captured army to mind control station 8. I should have figured it out before. Doom wasn't elected legally. He used one of his electronic gizmos to control the minds of the world leaders. That's what I saw on the president's neck in the photo I took of him. But now that I know, what am I going to do about it? With my camera stuck to the wall, I'll get some great pictures of my battle with Dr. Doom. That is, if I ever live to sell them to the Bugle. With the entire world at my command, the Empire of Doom shall reign on Earth forever. Oh, say it isn't so. I'd sure hate to see that ugly mug of yours in my history book. Spider-Man, you've disturbed me for the last time. I just saw enough stars to pack the Academy Awards. Okay, the fun's over. It's time to put Plan A into effect. And it better work, because there isn't any Plan B. Robot Z4 and 5, destroy Spider-Man. It's too late, Doomsy. Your robots are under my control now. Okay, kiddies, Spidey says, take care of your loudmouth leader. Get back, you mechanical misfits. You're mine. I made you. You've won this battle, Spider-Man. But you haven't heard the last of Doctor Doom. All right, playmates. It's time to remove those mind control gadgets. in the Bugle's history, and we don't have any photographs. Where is that pest, Parker? I don't know, Uncle Jonah. Last I saw of him is when he deserted me at the U.N. It was just when the action got a little rough. Did, did you call me, J.J.? Parker, you two-bit deserter! I ought to sue you for hightailing it out of the U.N. and leaving my nephew alone to face Spider-Man and that other maniac. Who said I left? I just hid. I figured Spider-Man would return to the scene and take care of Dr. Doom. But look at these. Get out your checkbook, J.J. These are worth a mint. Now that I have some bucks again, how about you and me, Betty? There's a great flick of the bijou about a strange super guy from another planet who's allergic to green rocks. <laughs> Sounds great, Petey. It's for you, Parker. Peter, this is your Aunt May. It's getting late, dear. You better come home now. You need your sleep. There's school tomorrow. No They're very small, but they taste like a whole bunch of fruit in your mouth. And these are fruit roll-ups. They're big and flat, and you can twist them and tear them. Whoa! With real fruit, that would be really messy. But fruit roll-ups and fruit wrinkles are made with real food. Right, Mom? Right, Roland. I like them because when they put in the fruit, they put in the fun, too. <laughs> 
Cobra Mamba. Cobra Mamba, its power is frightening from out of the blue. It strikes like lightning. The Cobra Mamba is a fast attack copter with laser guns and missiles on both sides. There's a persuader attack. The Mamba holds three Cobras and the sides detached to become separate attack pods. Triple threat means yes, Cobra Mamba. Cobra! Yo, Joe! G.I. Joe! The adventure of G.I. Joe, Cobra Mamba, and other vehicles and figures sold separately. Yo, Joe! So if you're digging Spider-Man, I know I do. Still love me some Spider-Man, especially these 80s ones. Ah, god dang, they were so good. So good. But we're going to the cartoon that affected a lot of kids, man, my age. Because they were not ready for it. And we're going to Robotech. Man, Robotech was not for kids. Um, yes, it was here in America, but to be honest, man, I don't think it was for kids overseas. I think it was for teenagers, but it was marketed towards like, you know, nine, 10 year olds here in America. In Japan, it was probably like 14, like high school kids, but man, damn, probably one of the coolest robot designs. Um, the ships are awesome. The, the... Man, the, the, the fact that they kill off people is just insane. And it was such a good cartoon. Uh, some people put this above other cartoons because of the fact that it did not look down on the, the kids watching it. And it was mature and it stayed mature through the entire run. Um, that's just anime. Man, a lot of anime was that way. It was, you know, yes, it was teenage kids, but man, they went through hell piloting and dealing with all the stuff so robotech's well into that genre and uh, has one of the best role-playing games ever was for robotech so you know there's that too and here you guys go this is robotech episode three space fold enjoy Ten years ago, a gigantic space battle fortress of unknown origin blasted through a warp fold in hyperspace and crash-landed on Earth. Alerted to the threat of invasion from space, the people of Earth united to learn the secrets of the mysterious ship's advanced technology. The space fortress's design and capabilities are still not completely understood, but what Earth scientists have learned has led to a combination of computer and robotic technology called Robotech. The alien race, known as the Zentradi, have followed the SDF-1, and now the Earth is under attack. Rick Hunter, an amateur flyer caught up in the planet-wide war, has become an unwilling Veritech fighter pilot, and he has rescued a beautiful young girl named Min -Mei. His old friend, Lieutenant Commander Roy Poker, has reason to believe that young Rick may be in trouble. Rick, come in, Rick! The poor kid's just had to take on more than he can manage. Well, I can't leave him behind. Skull leader to control. Lisa, I'm going back to pick up something I left down on the island. Captain Kramer will take command of the fighter group until I return. Over. Why are you returning? Over. 
Rick Hunter in fighter VT-102 is still back on the island, and I have to go pick him up now. That pilot's an imposter. I've gone through the entire registry, and I find no record of such a person. Well, that's easy enough to explain. He's a civilian, so he isn't listed in the military registry. What? A civilian? But I thought, uh, uh... Huh? Civilian? Who is he? Kevin, she's alive. Uh oh. The alien? I gotta go. She might panic if she sees that. Hope this thing will still fly. seems to have formed a permanent attachment to you guys. No, shh! Amazing, isn't it? It's Boy. really incredible! How's that for convenience? Fighters are safely aboard the ship now. Yes, sir. That's the last two, sir. All fighters are accounted for except for Commander Foker and VT-102. Good. I don't think we have to worry about Commander Foker. Vanessa, show me the positions of Armor 1 and Armor 10 on the monitor screen. Yes, sir. They're both approaching rendezvous point now. We should be making contact with them in about half an hour. Very good. Any sign of enemy craft, Claudia? No, Captain. It's all clear. Excuse me, Captain, but isn't that strange? What? After launching such a massive attack from orbit, why isn't the enemy continuing their attack? It just doesn't make sense, does it? That's bothering me, too. There has to be a reason they're just playing with us. Oh? oh. Do you really think they're just playing with us, Captain? Yes. They have the advantage, but they don't attack. They must have a reason. Huh. She doesn't want to go to the ship, Roy. She wants to go back to Macross Island. Are you crazy? 
The place is crawling with aliens. It would be suicide for her to go back there. Did she give any reason for wanting to go back? Well... Well, I'm worried about my aunt and uncle back in the shelter with the invaders all around them. They're perfectly safe there. The shelters are impregnable. But I still want to go back to the island. It's my home. I promise. As soon as the war's over, I'll take you back there personally. Oh. What do you mean, you'll take her back? I will! Huh? Huh? Ooh. Hold on a minute, Rick. This is Skull Leader calling SDF-1. Over. Did you find him? He was annoying a young lady. I had to rescue her as well. You rat! So that's our civilian pilot. I wondered why he didn't know how to fly his plane. Who's that old sourpuss, Roy? Old sourpuss? <laughs> that old sourpuss is our control operator, Lisa Hayes. And if she looks like an old sourpuss to you, you're not as grown up as I thought you were, Rick. <laughs> now listen, Commander Foker, you'd better have a good explanation for turning a Veritech fighter over to an amateur <laughs> civilian pilot. You could be court-martialed for this, you know. Ooh, she's mad. As for you, Rick Hunter, you're in a lot of trouble whether you know it or not. This whole thing's her fault. I think I'd apologize to her if I were you, Rick. Women her age can get awful mean, you know. Bridge Control, this is Skull Leader requesting landing instructions. Give us a bay number, you old sourpuss. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, bring your plane into Bay 504. <clears throat> Yes, only half of them came back. Where is the Battle Fortress now? It's passing through the atmospheric ranges presently. Apparently, it's on its way to rendezvous with the other ships. What's your plan, Rita? We could shoot them down now, but I don't want that ship damaged. Once they're out of gravity, they can execute a hyperspace fall, taking them beyond the range of our guns. You have a point there, Exodor. Perhaps I'd better apply a little restraining force in order to slow them down a bit. Prepare a laser bombardment. Ready on gun. Massive laser bombardment. Repeat. All gun range crews ready your lasers for total bombardment of target area. Stand by for order to fire. I got a little surprise for you, Rick. Wait till you see it. <laughs> Here we are. Come on. Was that really necessary, Roy? She could have been hurt. Golly, Rick, look at that. Somebody left this thing behind, so I've stashed it here. Oh, wow. My racer. I thought I'd never see it again. You saved it. Oh, thank you, Roy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank hey, you. Hey, cut it out, Rick. Oh, oh. Take it easy. I just thought you'd feel more comfortable flying in this than one of our Veritex. It doesn't turn into a battleoid. Oh, golly, Roy. I've seen huh? that plane before. It was in the air show this morning, Attention wasn't it? Attention all hands. We are approaching rendezvous with armor 1 and 10. Report to your docking stations immediately. All hands report to your stations. I have to get going now. Ah. You two stay here and don't wander around. If you start exploring, you'll get lost. You can't imagine how enormous this ship is, so stay put. <laughs> between the ships. I don't care how many of the smaller ones are destroyed, but the large one must not be damaged. Yes, sir, Commander. Attention all gunnery crews. We will commence massive barrage. Take particular care not to damage the battle fortress. Gun commanders may fire with men. A brief Robotech intermission is required for these urgent messages. Robotech shall now resume transmission.
vessel. What's their position? The current attack is from the exact same location as the first one, Captain Global. Their orbit is 10,000 miles from here. Reporting, Miranda Cersei and Armor 3 were destroyed. They're tearing our fleet to shreds. What about our damages? We've taken no direct hits, Captain. No damage shown anywhere, sir. What is our position? Um, we're just closing our initial orbit, approaching our original position over Macross Island at an altitude of 100 miles. Claudia, steer for a landing on Macross Island. At 2,000 feet altitude, activate the fold system for a position jump. Are you sure you want to do that, Captain? The fold system hasn't even been tested yet. I realize how risky it is, Claudia, but if we stay in this position, we'll be totally defenseless. But we're not even sure how the system works. We can't just surrender, Lisa. We have to try everything first. Ready the fold system for a position jump, targeting the area behind the moon. Get your radar busy on an access check, Lisa. We'll make the jump from precisely 2,000 feet above the island. Huh? Don't we need permission from headquarters? This is an emergency. We don't have time for that. But, Captain, you know the regulations specifically... Uh, sorry, sir. I know what the regulations say, but I appreciate you bringing it to my attention. I just wanted Claudia, to... <gasps> you've got my order. Yes, sir, Captain. Attention all hands. Priority. Fold system standby. Readying maximum green energy at all power stations. All hands to emergency positions. Repeat. All hands to emergency positions. This is not a drill. Prepare for fold in T-minus five minutes and counting. Mark. just went to another shelter, that's all. Nothing's going to happen to anyone as smart as Minmay, isn't that right? Yeah. Are you planning on going somewhere? I'm gonna take you back to the island like I promised. You still wanna go, don't you? Because I'm not gonna hang around here one way or the other. Thanks. What's a fold? Oh, nothing to do with us. Come on, let's go. It's so small. Will it hold two people? If they're very friendly, it will. Uh. Here, put this on. Oh. Uh. Uh, wow. <laughs> it's so cute on you, Minmay. You could start a whole new fashion. <laughs> oh, you. to fly if you sit there. I'm sorry, Rick, but it's so tall. <laughs> There's nothing to be afraid of, Minmay. I'm an expert pilot. There now, okay? <laughs> we will interfold in ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six... Zero. Execute hyperspace fold jump. It may be impossible, but they did it. What'll we do now, Commander? Uh, I want to be informed of their exact location immediately. Now, sir? Now.
Let's have some light in here. Switching the backup generator, sir. Radar shows an extremely large object just beneath us, sir. Our jump target was the moon. That's what your large object is. No, it's too small to be the moon, sir. I'll put it on the monitor screen for you. <gasps> it's coming at us. No, we're moving toward it. <gasps> it's Macross Island, Captain Glover. Retro rockets, Claudia. Maximum thrust. It's no go. I'm getting no response whatever from the computer. Emergency, emergency. Prepare for impact. Prepare for impact. It's covered with ice, Captain. at all from the fan jet. Somehow, we seem to have drifted out into deep space, and that means we're in deep trouble. Oh my, isn't it romantic? Yes, it is. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's that hissing sound? Oh, it's perfectly all right. Don't get upset about it. <laughs> you hear all kind of weird noises in these things. <laughs> huh. I don't dare tell her it's our oxygen leaking out. Maybe this will hold it temporarily. Let's get out of here, okay? Hey, what's your hurry? Just relax and enjoy the view. If the boosters don't work, we're uh. sunk. Comfy? Uh-huh. We'd better try to find the battle fortress. Something funny's been going on around here. There it is! Looks like they're still fighting down there. Don't worry. They closed the landing base during combat. Huh? Maybe, maybe we can go through the hole he made. with headquarters yet? No, Captain. I've tried, but I haven't been able to raise them. Are you sure there's no system malfunction? Negative. None at all. It's operating perfectly. Give me the reading on our position. The planet Pluto's orbit according to the computer plot. The planet Pluto? Is that possible? It can't be. I was against this fold system <gasps> all along. Captain. Oh, oh Captain. Captain. No, no, no. Settle down. Don't panic. All we have to do is refold to get right back where we started. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. I hope not, Captain. No, what was it? Yes. Mm. What? It can't be. Impossible. I'll be right there. Captain? What's happened? Chief Engineer Lang tells me the fold system has vanished into thin air. <gasps> <gasps> Sir, did you say vanished? That's what he told me. We'll never get back. Oh, no! Gonna be a long trip. In our next episode, Rick and Min may learn they have landed in a closed off and forgotten section of the SDF 1.
Try as they may, they can find no way out, and no one aboard the ship has any idea where they are. Time passes slowly and cruelly for the imprisoned pair, as what started out to be a fun adventure turns into a deadly nightmare of hunger and exhaustion, driving them to the edge of hysteria. Don't miss The Long Wait, the next thrilling chapter in the saga of Robotech. From the Vernon Key Cars Collection. Flashy sports cars, classics, rugged trucks and racing rigs. All ready for power, key action. Push in those keys and give them a squeeze. You can run them and crash them. You can race them. Vernon Key Cars. Yeah, the key sports. There are 20 Vernon Key Cars, each sold separately. Vernon Key Cars come with a color-coordinated keychain. Each car sold separately. New from Kidco. This is the claw, and you control it. C L A W, the controlled land action wagon. Batteries not included. Play people sold separately. The power shifter lets you control the speed, forward or reverse. Power steering lets you control direction. It climbs with ferocious front wheel drive that claws up hills and roars over the earth. The claw, and you control it. The claw with power shifter. Play people sold separately. New from Tonka. You know, I don't understand. Why haven't we built Valkyries yet? He seemed like a, that, that's a robot design that could happen. Just throwing it out there. When are we going to get Valkyries? Just, just wonder. Just wonder. Don't get me wrong. You build me a fully working Gundam. Yeah, we got the one that kind of walks. But until you get me a fully functional Gundam. Japan, I'm looking at you. You need to get on the ball about this really quick. <laughs> so, we're stepping out of the more realistic, I guess, anime. And we're going uh, back to He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. <clears throat> Yet again, you can come over here with animation by filmation. And I can go, okay, let's go. Look at this. Man, seriously. This is good, good stuff. The He Man and the Masters of the Universe. Boom, look at that. You got all the articles on there. You got storyboards and the whole nine yards. But this is He Man. This is episode 10, and this is Reign of the Monster. Enjoy. <laughs> And the masters of the universe. I am Adam, Prince of Eternia and defender of the secrets of Castle Grayskull. This is Cringer, my fearless friend. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to me the day I held aloft my magic sword and said, By the power of Grayskull! became the mighty battle cat and I became He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Only three others share this secret. Our friends, the Sorceress, Man at Arms, and Orko. Together we defend Castle Greyskull from the evil forces of Skeletor. And 
prince of destruction has been in prison for centuries. You promised to find the weak point in the crystal and free him. The magic of the elders is too strong, King Von. Only something with their power will free him. I know of just such a thing, Skeletor. Then get it. I'm glad you could make it to this celebration of ours, He-Man. I wouldn't miss it, Stratos. It's only once a year you take out the staff given to your people by the elders. Just what does that staff do, Stratos? This. Avion is being attacked. Man the defenses. Know how to work a photon cannon, Teela? I'm a fast learner, Father. <laughs> Stop those heat rays! Clear out! Malcrum. Malcrum? The sorceress might know that name. Dolora, I promise you, I'll bring Stratos back. Stratos is my brother, He-Man. I'm going with you. Very well. <laughs> Never tell you. Oh, you will. You will. <laughs> this is Malgrim. With him, the Torgs were invincible, so the elders used their magic to imprison him deep in the caves in which the Torgs live. Caves? I don't like the sound of that. The Staff of Avion can free Malcrum, and Malcrum has the power to destroy Greyskull. Then we'd better start moving. There's something even worse. Do we really have to know about it? Once the Staff is used for evil, it must be used quickly to undo that evil, or it will... Explode and take half of Eternia with it. Me on the other half? The Torgs live somewhere in these caves. Uh, they're not the only things.
this way. The Torks! <sighs> Time for a fight! Greetings, He-Man. Skeletor. A friend of yours is waiting for you. Stratos! Not just one, many! One of them is the real Stratos, but all are under my spell! <laughs> Don't get too rough until we know which one is the real Stratos. Returned and yours is gone. You're free of Skeletor's magic now. Staff of Avion, I command you. Show me the weak point. Here it is. What? Some unfinished business, Skeletor. True, He-Man. And now is the time to finish it! Foolish <laughs> mortals, say hello to Molcrum! <laughs> your help at Grayskull. The rest of you, get that staff before it explodes. It's Mulgrim. Maybe 
this will stop him. This wasn't a good idea. Get 
Tila. Tila, are you all right? Fine, but there's no time to lose. The staff of Avion is going to explode! Get this staff to He-Man before it's too late. It's going to explode! close one. He-Man, help. I'm weakening. Skeletor is lowering the jaw bridge. At last! <laughs> Grey Skull is mine! Going somewhere, hey, Skeletor? Anytime you like. <laughs> now, to begin the festival. <laughs> Let's hope there aren't any more interruptions. He Man, help! tree looks good enough to eat, doesn't it? That's like a lot of things you might find around your house or in your neighborhood. But looks can fool you. Sometimes things that look or smell good can make you very sick. Remember, never taste or eat anything if you're not sure what it is. The best thing to do is to ask a grown-up who knows. Remember, it's better to be safe than sorry. Till next time! <laughs> Stomper SSE Super Cycles. Cycles with the speed you power with a quick pull of the ripcord. You can race them with a friend. Or you can set up your own action stunt course, indoors or out. The Stomper SSE Super Cycles are cycles with speed. Stomper SSE Super Cycles, available in six models, each sold separately from Shopper. Strawberry shortcake and it's your sweet. There for ten kisses, make kissing a treat. Each sold separately. Baby strawberry shortcake, give your mommy a kiss. I love you, baby orange blossom. When you squeeze their tummies, they blow sweet scented make believe kisses. Delicious baby angel cake. <laughs> Time to get ready for your nap. Don't you just love them to pieces? <laughs> Baby strawberry shortcake and baby orange blossom and baby angel cake each sold separately. From All right. 
So I had a friend go on the uh, work vacation a while back, and he brought me back this. Uh, I want you to tell me what is wrong with this comic. Can you see what's wrong with it? Let me know. Uh, because I have awesome friends, and they bring me cool stuff when they go on vacation. And that's one of them. Thank you, Ed Martin. You're awesome. So I hope you guys dig He-Man. I still hope you guys are still digging He-Man. Love some He-Man. Just, I, yeah, and people pointed out, yeah, I, how, how can, he's like breaking chains in one thing, he's held hostage, then he's like breaking through mountains in the next, the consistency on, on He-Man's powers is null and void, um, but who cares, it's He-Man, it is a 30 minute commercial, uh, 22 minutes actually, but uh, I don't care, I understand it was a commercial. And I still to this day know it's a commercial. My children knew that they were commercials. So I, I don't get why people are like, you know it's a commercial. Yeah. So. <laughs> but we're staying within the universe. We're staying and we're going over here to He-Man's little sister. I say little sister, they're twins. But <clears throat> somebody pointed this out to me. There, there's the whole thing where uh, Hordak looks at Skeletor and goes, I kidnapped Baby Aurora from them. And then Skeletor turns and goes, what? <laughs> I may be a killer, but I'm not a kidnapper. That's crazy talk. So, <laughs> it's pretty bad when, 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 when Skeletor is the, is the moral, it takes the moral high ground. I'm just saying. But we're staying in this genre. We're going... Uh, She-Ra episode Trace, and we're doing She-Ra Unchained. And uh, she's going to be putting out an album, uh, Unchained, with uh, uh, backing vocals by now. <laughs> nope, uh, She-Ra episode 3, She-Ra Unchained. Enjoy. Darkness rules, fights the champion of light. Where hope seems lost, there rides the rebellion. Together they stand ready against the dark, evil warriors of the Horde and their leader, the terrible Horda. Armed with hope and ancient powers against the force of an intergalactic army. This is the story of one who will become leader of the Great Rebellion. Shira, Princess of Power, 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 Power. In the last episode. He-Man convinced Adora to see for herself how bad the Horde was. Adora learned that He-Man was right. The Horde was evil. She returned to the Fright Zone and told the Horde's leaders she would no longer serve them. But they put an evil spell on her and stole the sword He-Man had been sent to give to Adora, even as He-Man escaped, determined to find her. And now, Chapter 3 of The Sword of She-Ra. Some weapon in the Horde arsenal. <laughs> Behold, the Magna Beam Transporter. 
<laughs> what does it do? Watch. See that battle wagon? It was wrecked during the last battle with the rebellion. It is of no use to me, so... Look on the view screen. Oh, you sent it to the Valley of the Lost. Oh, exactly! No one has ever returned from the Valley of the Lost. And with this Magna Beam, I shall at last rid myself of those pests who call themselves rebels. Till now, they have hidden from me in the Whispering Woods. But those woods shall protect them no longer. Once the Magna Beam is at full power, I will transport the entire Whispering Woods to the Valley of the Lost. And all the rebels with it! <laughs> oh, wonderful. Shall we do it now? Not yet. The ray must be at full charge, and that will take some time. Here in the plunder room is the energy source for the Magna Ray. The ray uses the energy of willpower. This rebel was caught trying to stop a horde trooper from arresting his brother. And I do it again, you evil tyrant. The people of Etheria will not bow to rule by force. Not now, not ever. As you can see, he has great strength of will. Foolishly misguided, he will do nicely. Beware, Hordak. One day we shall drive you and your criminal crew away from this planet, and Etheria will be free again. I feel so weak. What is happening to me? Ah! He had less power than I'd hoped. Charging the Magna Beam will take a long time with such weak material. We must capture more rebels! What happens to the prisoners afterward? They make excellent servants for Horde generals. Don't they, slave? Yes, master. Adam, mission or no mission, it's foolish for you to go to the Fright Zone. Oh, you'll be captured. Stay with us in the safety of Whispering Woods. Now, even the Whispering Woods are not safe from the Horde. I have to get going. Cringer, you stay here. You're too noticeable. Sorry. Oh, that's okay, Adam. You shall not go alone. We stand together in this Rebel Brotherhood. And easy, Bo. I appreciate your offer, but you're needed here. Besides, one man is less noticeable than two. So I go alone. You are a brave man, Adam. I salute you. Good fortune speed you on your mission. Yeah, well, thanks. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. an easy place to sneak into. I don't look much like a member of the Horde. But maybe I can change that. By the power of Grayskull! Catch up with your friends before they get inside the fight zone. Blast! That was the last prisoner in the dungeons. We need more power! 
guards! Take him away and find me another rebel! I must have more prisoners! The patrol should be returning any moment, Tordak. Perhaps they have captured more rebels for you. Perhaps. Are they in sight yet? Oh, let me check. Here they come now, but I see no prisoners. The incompetent fools! They failed to capture more rebels, and now they have lost one of their own men! No! Here he comes now. He must have been straggling. Wait! That man is no trooper. It's that rebel warrior again! Well, he shall not escape this time. I'll have him stopped once and for all! Wait. Let us not be so hasty. This warrior is a source of great power. If we capture him, he will supply the Magna Beam with all the energy it needs. And with the Magna Beam charged... <laughs> I'll send the rebels to a place where they'll never bother me again! <laughs> The rebel is inside the fright zone now, Hordak. Well, I've made it into Doom Tower. So far, so good. But finding Force Captain Adora in a place this size is not going to be easy. Wait a minute. There she is. Alert my personal guard. I will capture him myself. He will not escape me this time. Hello, Adora. <gasps> How did you get in here? You don't need that. Please, just listen to me for a moment. What do you want? Adora, do you remember the last time we talked? Yes. I asked you to go to the villages and see for yourself what the Horde is really like. Yes, I remember. Did you do it? Did you go out and learn for yourself that the Horde is evil? Yes. So, now you know, right? Yes. I know. I know that you are a lying rebel spy and that you were under arrest. Good work, Force Captain. This particular rebel has a habit of causing trouble for me. That's one habit I mean to keep, Hordak. I don't think so, rebel. Guards! <laughs> Boss Captain Adora, stop the rebel! <sighs> Excellent, Force Captain. Guards, take this rebel to the plunder room and put him in the Magna Beam charger. His energy should be all I need to charge the Magna Beam to full capacity. <laughs> the, the charger? No, please, you, you can't. Do you have an objection, Force Captain? No objections, my liege. To the plunder room with the rebel! Amazing! His power is incredible! I must be careful not to drain his energy too fast, or the machine will overload. This could take all night. Uh, Problems, Weaver? There is something strange about these swords. They are not of this world. Oh, they have a strange power that I cannot control. I will have to consult my books. There is no hurry. By morning, I will have completely drained the Rebels' energy for my Magna Beam Transporter. <laughs> Let us go now, Weaver. Tomorrow, the dawning of the new day shall herald the final end of the Rebellion. <laughs> No, no. 
It's evil, no. Something strange is happening. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to find out. Well, everything seems to be in order here. The strong rebel grows weaker. Soon he will be just another slave. But it is for the good of the Horde. It must be done. Yet, why do I feel so unsure? I don't know why I came down here anyway. I must have been dreaming. There's nothing here for... Adora, Adora, the time has come for you to seek your destiny. You must throw off the enchantments that have made you a slave to the Horde's will. Let your heart guide you toward the path that you know to be right. And let this sword give you the strength to follow that path. Use that strength to protect the weak and to help right the wrongs committed by the Horde. And let your first duty be to this man, about to be enslaved by the Horde. A rebel warrior? He is no ordinary rebel, Adora. He is He-Man, hero and champion on the side of goodness. But to you, Adora, he is also something more. Adora, the Horde stole you from your parents when you were a tiny baby. So you never knew your mother, and you never knew your father. But you also had a twin brother. <gasps> This man is your brother, Adora. And Adora, he needs your help. For the honor of Greyskull, Adora. For the honor of Greyskull? For the honor of Greyskull. do anything the guards will be here any second who are you a friend who wants to help you the sword of power my sword of course the sword of power what is going on here he man catch <laughs> By the power. Hurry, He-Man. This door won't last much longer. Of Grey Skull. He-Man. I have the power. He-Man. Stand away from that door, men. It's Hordak. All right. Stand back now. <laughs> Aha! There's no need to fight. Let's just get out of here. Wait, there's something you don't know. Ha! The Magna Beam! It is fully charged! I don't know who you are, but your rescue is too late. Guards! Take these rebels at your leisure. I shall go upstairs to activate the Magna Beam. Magna Beam? What's a Magna Beam? Don't ask. We have to stop him. I'll take care of that. You go warn the rebellion. Right. Good luck. Go, spirit. Oh. 
I am swift wind now, dear friend. You guys are going to have to do better than that. So am I, this is taking too long. Hordak said he was going upstairs. Maybe I can take a shortcut. Pretty good, Rebel, but not good enough. I'm activating the Magna Beam. This will take care of Whispering Woods. <laughs> oh, no. Hordak has turned on the Magna Beam. I've got to do something. Wait, that big rock just might do it. Down, Swiftwind! Now! <sighs> no! My Magna Beam wasted on a rock! Well, I still have enough power for a second shot. Sorry. What happened? Where are we? Huh? I don't know what happened, but my energy is returning, and I know exactly where we're going. Back to the rebellion, men. <laughs> well, Rebel, you smashed my magna beam and saved your worthless friends. So I did. Pretty good, huh? Not good enough. Rebel, I still have you. I'm going to freeze you solid with freeze rays and drop you into the Valley of the Lost myself. God! Whoa! Oh, oh, he's getting away! Poor Hordak. <laughs> he's had a pretty frustrating day. Thanks for the rescue. By the way, you were just in time. Well, what are sisters for, anyway? Sister? What do you mean? He-Man, I think we have a lot to talk about. And now, here are some exciting scenes from Chapter 4 of The Sword of she -Ra. of my very new Sweet Sense Kitchen. Okay, you can start cooking. Judge, I hope you like my apple pie. I'd better turn up the strawberries. Mmm, everything smells very delicious, like apples and strawberries. But the gingerbread wins. Who made the gingerbread? I did. Oh! The Strawberry Shortcake Sweet Sense Kitchen comes with everything you see here. New from... You are controlling the fastest train in the world. The most revolutionary machine on tracks. The incredible Super Turbo Train. So fast it travels in scale beyond the speed of sound. So powerful it can do what no other train can do. Race up a wall defying gravity. Now the ultimate. You streak upside down through the giant loop. You turn out the lights and you're in night glow. Streamlining the darkness. Take control of the fastest train in the world. Super Turbo Train. New from Tyco, of course. Oh. The world's fastest train is taking off. Super Turbo Train with Daredevil Jump travels in scale beyond the speed of sound. So fast, it races up a wall and even upside down. So fast, it makes the incredible Daredevil Jump and keeps on going. There's nothing else like it. Take control of the fastest and only airborne train. The new Super Turbo Train with Daredevil Jump from Tyco. 
real thing in racing thrills. Here are Tonka's new power punchers, pocket-sized cars. You can rev them up and pow, pow, power punchers. You can race them and run them, jump them and bump them. The Tonka toy built Tonka Tonka for fun, fun, fun. A pocket full of fun. Power punchers, each sold separately. New from Tonka. I'm going to ask everybody. Who's your favorite? Uh, which one was your favorite He-Man character? I mean, not saying the one that appeared on the show. I'm a big fan of Skeletor. Like to love the design of Skeletor. Uh, big Scareglow fan. Love the design of Scareglow. Um, there's some really cool villains, man. I want to know which He-Man villain is your favorite. Which one would you... Do you have a whole bunch of them? Whatever. Just let me know. So we're, we're hopping out of the He-Man She-Ra universe and we're going into the other shared universe. We're starting off with some Transformers. <sighs> Love Transformers, man. Awesome things. Uh, I, keep telling the, I keep telling the Admiral, the Tina, um, I'm looking at, at buying a couple cars to get them and turn them into Transformers. Uh, I'm probably going to be buying a Mustang here soon so I can turn it into Barricade. And the easy peasy one is I'm looking to buy a, a uh, Camaro to turn it into Bumblebee. But here's what I found. I found a cab over a semi truck. I could definitely turn it into Optimus Prime. I'm just saying. I can't drive a semi. But I would have a semi painted like Optimus Prime. That's why I like eight grand. Yeah, I'm just saying. So I need to raise money to get eight grand so I can build an Optimus Prime. And then I will keep it on the show. Uh, actually, if any of you guys want to help me buy a vehicle that I can turn into a Transformer, uh, go to our Patreon and donate money. And uh, donate a lot of money so I can buy a car quickly. No. <laughs> just, just mess with you. Just mess with you. But you're, but when you do Patreon, that does help because I'm currently shopping for a new computer. So, And I'm picky. I'm super picky. It took me forever to decide on the chair. It's taken me just as long to find a computer I like. So... <clears throat> I'm weird, so it's it, it's got to be like almost basic, but just have a ton of space. <laughs> so here you guys go. I'm, I'm babbling about stuff, but here's Transformers episode six, and this is divide and conquer. Factories are busy manufacturing weapons to be used against the greatest threat the world has ever known. Evil, super-powerful robots, Decepticons. If you can use your computer skills to step up our efficiency chip, we'll be able to double our weapons output. I'll give it a try, sir. Decepticons! Foolish insects! <laughs> Humans run funny, don't they, Starscream? Uh, look out <laughs> behind you! Drain this factory of its energy at once! Fill the Energon cubes! There's nothing we can do to stop them. Well, don't cash in your computer chips yet, sir. There may still be a few buttons we can push. Any luck, Optimus Prime? Did you figure out where the Decepticon space bridge will show up next? I'm afraid not, Ironhide. I've scanned the area where the bridge first appeared, but my readouts came up to zero. We might as well head back to Autobot headquarters, Prime. 
Wait, a distress signal from Chip Chase at the munitions plant. Decepticons attacking. Autobots, transform and meet me there. You heard the chief. Roll out. <laughs> I wonder if I'll ever get used to that. There it is, Starscream. Every last micro spark of energy we could wring from the place. I'm afraid your button pushing was too little, too late. Mission leader to Decepticon headquarters. Acknowledge Megatron. Megatron here. Report mission leader, Starscream. I have achieved complete success. All the factory's energy is ours. Return with the Energon cubes. When I receive the new coordinates for the space bridge, we will transport them to Cybertron. As you command, Megatron. But surely you wish to commend me for my efforts. After all, I was... Autobots. I knew the Autobots wouldn't let me down. Optimus Prime. Very perceptive. You outnumber Prime three to one. Gang up and destroy him. With pleasure. Alter attack angle. I'm with you. Optimus, are you all right? Affirmative, but keep back. I'd rather bash Prime one-on-one, -on -one, but when Megatron says, Thundercracker gangs! <laughs> you blew it, Thundercracker, but I won't. Wrong, as usual, Skywarp. Optimus, watch out! That's a heat-seeking missile! Optimus! The computer! Everything. Unidentified vehicles approaching. Autobots! Starscream, do not fight them! Escape with the Energon cubes! Decepticons! We'll run them into the ground! You can't, Ironhide! You've got to help Optimus Prime! Wow! What happened to you, Prime? Badly damaged. Losing energy rapidly. Wheeljack, can you repair me? I hope so, but not here. Can you still transform? I'll try. Power relays are fused. Mobility limited. Part replacement essential. Gotta make it. I don't know. He got hit real bad. Hey, lighten up, you guys. Optimus is gonna pull through. He's he's got to. What is the condition of Optimus Prime? He has been permanently deactivated. We saw him fall. Fall, yes. But can you guarantee his laser core was extinguished? I must be certain. Soundwave, activate laser beak. Laser beak, transform. Come to me. Fly to Autobot headquarters and learn the true condition of Optimus Prime. I think Laserbeak's chicken. He'll have more to fear if he refuses to obey me. If Optimus Prime's laser core was in fact extinguished, we shall destroy the accursed Autobots, and none shall stand between us and our conquest of the universe. What's your diagnosis, Ratchet? It's a miracle that his hydraulics are still functioning. Weaker. 
Electro pulse fading. He's doomed. I know it. I can feel it in my data bank. Nuts to that. There's got to be something we can do. Isn't there, Dad? I don't know, son. Now, laser beak, finish him off! What the? It's laser beak! Stop him! He started some kind of chain reaction inside Optimus Prime. Get back, everyone! He's going to explode! The Transformers will return after these messages. To the Transformers. Everybody okay? We're fine, Dad. What about Optimus Prime? Functioning, but energy draining fast. They sure don't build them like that anymore. Ratchet, how long do we have before his energy drains away completely? Not long. Unless I can replace this. Huh. A Cosmotron. I have an extra one of these. But not here. Hey, talk to me. Talk to me. Point me in the right direction. It's not that simple, Bumblebee. The Cosmotron I'm talking about's in my old workshop on Cybertron. Cybertron? And to make matters worse, the Decepticons put a computerized lock on the door. I knew it was hopeless. I just knew... We got ourselves a computer whiz who might be able to get some of us through that door. Sounds like I've just volunteered to pick a lock. Well, what are we waiting for? I always wanted to visit another planet. Without Optimus Prime leading them, the Autobots will be helpless. Then why don't we attack them now, leader? It's usually good strategy. We attack when I so order, Starscream. Come in, Shockwave. Acknowledge. Hail, Megatron. When will the space bridge materialize? Within 72 billion astroseconds at these coordinates. Broadcast visual representation. Excellent shockwave. But how are we going to get to Sabatron in time, kid? Even Prime couldn't find a clue to the whereabouts of the next space bridge. But Optimus Prime didn't use the greatest detective on Earth, Teletran 1. By feeding Teletran 1 all the data we have about the space bridge's last appearance, I might get it to predict where the bridge will appear next. Hey, just like Sherlock Holmes with floppy disks. Come on, Teletran. Prime's running out of time. Careful with those cubes, Rumble. You clumsy clunker! Hey, who you calling clumsy gasket breath? My talents are wasted on this project. I should be in sole command of everything. Ready, Starscream. Hey, I thought we needed a driver to haul this stuff across the space bridge. We do. No, please. Not me. No. Have a nice journey, warrior. Say hi to the old gang on Cybertron! to Megatron. Energon cubes received. Chip, you and Teletran are some hot team. You found the space bridge. Autobots! Trash em. Battle time! <laughs> Shorted my optic sensors. Bumblebee, look out! Don't split that right? The party's just stuck! <laughs> this ought to shake you up! What 
The sorry sight for sore eyes. Starscream, wait! The rain has given me an idea. Let the Autobots win. Do as I say. <laughs> immediately for further orders. Jack's whole workshop. Don't give up. I know you can do it. There's one last sequence I can try. You did it, Chip! Now, if my detectors can only find that Cosmo, whatchamacallit. Was that fast enough? Let's get this gadget back to Optimus. Acid rain. If it hits our circuits, we're goners! And so is Optimus Prime! Oh. Ah. We failed, Chip. We failed. The Transformers will return after these messages. We now return to the Transformers. For them, for us, it is just starting. Everything is going according to my plan. The Autobots are without their mighty leader, and four of their number have been vanquished on Cybertron. Then I humbly suggest we attack their base now while we have the advantage. For one star scream, we agree. And I shall personally lead the assault. The new age of Decepticon supremacy is about to begin. What's the verdict, Wheeljack? We've done all we can, Sparkplug. Optimus Prime needs a new Cosmotron, and if we don't get one soon, all hope is lost. Optimus Prime, our, our world, the whole universe depends on us. Failed, Chip. Acid storm disabled circuit tree. No one's ever really disabled as long as he has courage. <laughs> well, guys, do we quit or fight? Maybe I still have enough power left to shield us from this killer rain. Way to go, Trailbreaker. Now your automatic repair systems can put you back in shape. And while they work, I'll take care of our three Raybreakers. <laughs> I never did like rain, acid, or otherwise. I'm really feeling better. Like I just stepped off the assembly line. All right, let's stop talking and save Optimus. Transform and roll for his life. Don't strain your linkage. I'll 
us free. The fools, they're back. They'll never reach Earth as functional mechanisms. <laughs> get the Cosmotron to Optimus Prime. How fast can you go, Bumblebee? Hold on to your teeth. I'm sorry, Spike. Sometimes nothing you do makes any difference. Optimus Prime? Dead? Telegram 1 security alarm. We're being attacked. Decepticons. Looks like all of them. Oh, we're doomed. Without Optimus Prime, we're no match for the Decepticons. We can't go down without trying. Prime would want us to go for it, no matter what the odds. Well, are you with me? Or do I fight this battle alone? Son, you can't. But we can. We get your message, Spike. Autobots, transform! Wheeljack and I'll stay here to guard Optimus Prime. Can you get a fix on the enemy's location, Hound? Radar scope detects Decepticons in close proximity, Huffer. Forget the radar, here they come! All right, guys! Let them have it! No prisoners! You can't hit all of us at once, Earth Jam! Ravage, bad kitty. So you want to rumble with Rumble, eh? We're expending too much energy. We must conserve. Cosmotron. Yeah, I just hope it's not too late. There's still time for us to see some action. But not for long. Where's the gizmo? in the universe who'll challenge the might of Megatron. There is one Megatron. I, Optimus Prime, challenge you. Optimus Prime? He lives? Our leader's back. He accepted your challenge, leader. The battle code requires you to engage him in combat alone. Then it's just the two of us, Megatron. <laughs> I use too much power against the Autobots. I need assistance. How unfortunate. If you cannot fight your opponent yourself, you are not fit to be our leader. I am the only suitable leader anyway. Megatron, do you yield? Yield for now, only for now. Retreat and take our leader back for repairs. Yeah! I guess that takes care of the Decepticons. Uh-uh, they'll be back. I just know it. They'll be back. The Transformers will return after these messages.
They call me Yuck Mouth, cause I don't brush. Oh, I like my teeth like this. They call me Yuck Mouth, no, I won't brush. How's about a little kiss? I got those beef in my teeth, got some chicken too. Ouch, that's a cavity. Hey, that's new. Well, if you don't brush your teeth, then get you too. Can be a yuck mouth. Don't be a yuck mouth. Another nutritional message from the ABC Television Network. Intelligence has identified a substantial buildup of hostile forces right here in our own backyard. I'm giving you the green light to clean them out. Gentlemen, you're the best. Get up there and prove it. Okay, boys, let's kick some teeth. Max for your VCR. Yeah. If it were any more real, it wouldn't be a game. Run search that planet, Magnus. We've got to find them, but they're helping him defeat the Decepticons. Look, it's the Headmaster Autobots. Incredible. Yes, the driver of the vehicle actually becomes the head of the robot. Headmaster Transformers. More, much more. The Transformers. Headmaster Autobot displays a readout of its power. Nothing's better than going to battle with Headmaster Transformers, sold separately from Hasbro. The Vincent loves himself some Sonic comics. I always snag them for him whenever I can get them in bulk. I just always hand them off to him and let him have at them. Uh, and he will... He doesn't tear them up, surprisingly enough. Uh, he will read them a few times and then just leave them behind, but does not tear them up. Brandon and Joe, when they were that age, man, just read them and read them and read them and read them until they essentially fell apart. Uh, now, Joe has a nice little collection of comics. Uh, not as bad as the Captain's, because he knows that when anything happens to me, he just gets all of it. So, <laughs> But I hope you guys are still digging Transformers. I know I love Transformers. But we're staying in the same shared universe, and we're sneaking over to one of my personal favorite universes. Um, the fact that they both got picked up by Image Comics and Skybound, so they'll be written by Robert Kirkman, and uh, He-Man and uh, he G.I. Joe and Transformers are, are now part of Image Comics. Um, we're starting off again with 301 for the uh, Real American Hero, done by Larry Hama, but we're also getting G.I. Joe comics. And Transformer comics um, in the new universe. So there's that. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is G.I. Joe. And this is part five. The last part of the original G.I. Joe miniseries. Which, if any of you guys grew up back then, this and Transformers More Than Meets the Eye were game changers. I can't stress that enough. I remember being just <gasps> G.I. Joe's on. Ah. I remember when they released it, like after it was all done in five parts, they showed it on like Friday night. And we got the two hour movie in prime time. It's syndicated. I watched that stuff. It was great. And but this is the last part. This is part five, and this is Stake in the Serpent's Heart. Enjoy. Special Mission Force. Its purpose, to defend human freedom against Cobra, a ruthless terrorist organization determined to rule the world. He never gives up. He'll stay till the fight's won. G.I. Joe will dare. G.I. Joe.
Using the mass device, Destro and Cobra Commander steal a powerful satellite and terrorize the world. The G.I. Joe team builds its own mass device and fights Cobra around the globe for the three precious elements needed to fuel it. In the battle for the last element, Destro kidnaps Scarlet. But as he flies back to the secret Cobra Temple, Scarlet blasts Destro's control panel and sends them both spiraling to their fate. All in a stake in the serpent's heart. You fool! You've cost us both our lives! The stabilizer controls still work? Impossible! Centrifugal force has me been! My bow! The third arrow! It's a tractor rig! Hurry! Not that one, you jerk! The third one! That's it! Now, set it on short range or you'll blow it through the instrument panel! Gently hammer hands! Steady! Nothing's happening! It will! Do something! Fast! It's... frozen! It's... no! I never believed this grotesque hideaway would look so welcome. Ticket out with the third element. I knew you would not fail. However, all has not been going well since your departure. There was the ill advised attempt to destroy New York City. What? Ah, Destro. Noble Destro, my old friend. We congratulate you on the success of your mission. Success? You dare speak to me of success, you psychotic, sibilant servant of a dolt! Really, Destro, is that any way to talk to your leader? Your stupid, bungled attempt to disintegrate New York has given our enemies the two commodities they must not be allowed, time and hope. <coughs> Nothing undermines our cause more greatly than failure to execute our threats. Destro, even you must see that with the meteorite particles in our possession, we are invincible. <coughs> even you must see that. <laughs> yes, Commander, yes. And I shall assure us a victory by taking full authority over all operations myself. <laughs> that I told them nothing, and I will tell you even less. Relax, sister. We have the same friend. I do not understand. The ring. Duke's ring. Duke? Six foot two, eyes of blue. Look, I'll tell you straight off. Duke wouldn't want us to sit this one out. Understand? Yes, now I understand. 
understand perfectly. Yeah! All right, you crates, keep moving. Now, gentlemen, G.I. Joe has its own mass device, and it is ready for action. Yeah! Yeah! Hot slave, we have special greetings for you from Destro. Oh. <laughs> Valenkov, where have we been? It's all hazy. I do not know, Flag, but that one, it makes me afraid. Silence! I, Destro, order you now to speak to the people of your nations. The time has come to surrender at once or perish. I can't be sure where I've been or what has been happening to me, but... Destro is the new Cobra leader. Our severest test is yet to come. The monstrous imperialist Destro is demanding that... It is simple that... to command respect when one has the power to back up one's speech making. That is true, Destro. <laughs> That strip of metal you gave me works, Selena. If I concentrate, I can override the control of the Cobra soldiers. It works best when the energy level supplied to the headband is low. Stop, slaves! The cages of the male slaves. We are expected to serve their food. Can we count on them? Get to work! Wait only the proper moment. This is Ramar. When the time comes, he will lead the male slaves into battle against our hated Cobra Masters. The time must come soon. Our patience is wearing thin. Oh, soon. I promise you, very soon. Pass it on. We will be ready. Yeah! Such bottomless stupidity! The fools! Something troubles you, Destro? The world is not yet at your feet. Not one nation has surrendered. This one must take a vote. That one wants to take it under consideration. Don't they realize they're dealing with Destro? Oh, I'd say they all know that. And it doesn't frighten them in the least. They shall learn the price of their arrogance. Baroness, is the device at operating temperature? Yes, Destro. Then lock on homing devices and eradicate New York now. At once, do you hear? The world has denied my commands. Let them learn the consequence of insolence. Cobras fired off another mass destruction ray. We've got to do something. Maybe we can knock Destro's beam off course with a zap from our baby. It's worth a try. Festivities. 
Scarlet is still a prisoner, and we can't do anything about it. Until I remember where Cobra headquarters is. You, the people of the world, mistake my determination to conquer. I am not soft and merciful. Until your nation surrender to me, I shall execute your leaders one at a time, every half hour on the hour, starting with General Flag. Bring him to me, and I shall personally carry out his sentence. Is now not a suitable time? I don't see why not. Duke will be proud of me for this, Scarlet. You bet, kid. We shall be free! Yeah! you survived with your beautiful skins intact. Remove them from my sight! Well, it was fun while it lasted. Yes, you are very brave. But Duke's our only hope now. Everything is ready, Duke. Relax. Breathe deeply. Let your thoughts flow freely. It looks so weird. He's in no danger, Breaker. And this special sensory deprivation tank may be able to get at the memory of his Cobra captivity, which has somehow been erased. Let's start at the beginning, Duke, with your childhood in Iowa. Early on, your sense of justice and honor was tested, and you responded. It has never deserted you. It is at the heart of your idea of America, an idea despised by Cobra. That's it, Duke. It's coming into focus. Now concentrate on a cobra-headed fortress on top of a bleak mountain. It looks like the Hotel Dracula. That's it, Duke. Play it back slowly. You can do it. There. Start there and move forward about half speed. Hey, look at her. Wow. She's pretty nice. Hey, man, how could he forget a fizz like that? We've got it. The slave girl has Duke's ring. It's got special electronic characteristics, which can serve as our homing device right into the heart of Cobra's hideout. Perfect, Duke. The microchip components of your ring give us an excellent homing fix on the Cobra hideout. Then start massing us out, Dr. Vandermeer. Cobra's had things their way long enough. Yo, Joe! Yo! G.I. Joe will return after these messages. Now, back to G.I. Joe.
cover. Executed General, whether or not the battle goes against me. guy showed up. A girl gets tired hanging around the house. Later, sister. We've got a war to win. I was gonna bring flowers, but I thought you'd like these better. Yo, show! Or as you might say, so long! That's the mass device! It's pointed at the center of the Earth! The Cobra Commander! He's got to be here somewhere! So much for the Cobra Commander and his cronies, but it looks like Destro slipped away. I shall be back for vengeance. I swear it. I shall be back. Using part of our mass machine with what's left of theirs and a little bit of elements remaining, I think there's just enough juice to send the Eiffel Tower back where it belongs. Here goes. Put the Eiffel Tower back in London? I 
guess I goofed. But there's nothing I can do. All the elements are used up. We can't just leave things like this. There may be a way. It should reach Paris in a few days. Well, nobody's perfect. No, but we do okay. G.I. Joe will return after these messages. Come with me to a place You'll be glad that you did yeah, free. It's so much more a water store With Toys R Us kids <laughs> It's a magical land So where else would you go When everything's at Toys R Us And prices are low If it's new and hot It's, it's a toy they've got And the prices are hard to beat Oh, You can search the whole world For Toys R Us kids know It's the one and only place to go For games For toys Oh, fun It's the world's biggest place to go Joe's going to turn back. Cobra attacks. Going into action with action packs. Motorized action packs for fighting in close and going where vehicles can't. Cobra's hiding on that hill. The rope walker, radar station, anti-aircraft gun, and helicopter. Here comes Cobra with the counter attack. Battling Joe with Cobra action packs. Rope crosser, borer, mountain climber, and pom-pom gun. Cobra! Yo, Joe! G.I. Joe! American hero! Live the adventure of G.I. Joe. Action packs and figures sold separately. Yo, Joe! You wear delicious, bigger than your figure. Can delicious get you biting no more than you can chew? Food is delicious, bigger than your figure. Can delicious get you biting more than you can chew? So then delicious, chewy can delicious get you biting no more than you can chew? Can delicious, bigger than your figure. In fruit and tropical. So, I hope you guys are still digging G.I. Joe. Um, huge fan of G.I. Joe. Um, I've legitimately been collecting G.I. Joe since 1982. Uh, yes, my mom made me get rid of some of my stuff, but I didn't get rid of everything. I think I kept Snake Eyes and Sci-Fi. Maybe Ton of Rat. I kept a handful of figures. Maybe like just like a ta small tackle box. Um, now I have thousands of figures, uh, both carded and uncarded, the original G.I. Joe's, the, the three and three quarter inch, then the new three and three quarter inch, the new classified stuff. I got a ton of this stuff. <clears throat> Not as much as some people I know. They got, they, they got a lot. Uh, I probably would have a lot if I over, like, like spread it all out, but I don't, I like got it condensed. Uh, I have no idea what I'm going to do with it because there's a lot there. So... Hope you guys still dig G.I. Joe. Um, this is the last, that was the last part of the original miniseries with the mass device. Um, I remember ending on a cliffhanger, man. Freaking 1983, nine year old Paul was not ready for cliffhangers yet. So, even though I'd already dealt with cliffhangers for uh, uh, Empire Strikes Back, so. But. I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to try to put a, a cartoon past the credits. So keep an eye on there. Um, remember, 10,000 subscribers. We are almost there. I will ship this out to one lucky fan. We'll get a copy of Animation by Filmation. I will send it to you free of charge inside the United States. In the continental United States. I guess. I, get, I mean, I've shipped stuff to... We'll see. We'll, we'll, fingers crossed, somebody relatively close and I can ship it out, whatever. So, but we'll give that away. And uh, I'm already working on another gift, uh, another prize and stuff like that. So, I'm, I think I'm just going to go ahead and start giving stuff out here and there sporadically. I don't know. I think that's fun. But, 
here we go. We're going to talk about something here. Um, just went and seen Stevie Nicks with the the Admiral Tina. Um, love this album. Uh, this is such a good album. We have this discussion. Would Fleetwood Mac been any good if it wasn't for all the crazy bullcrap that went on behind the scenes? I, 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 I want to say no, because Fleetwood Mac was almost unheard of before Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks joined, and then they became Fleetwood Mac that we know now. We, we get rumors out of that. Um, not going to lie, Stevie Nicks did great. I went there for the Admiral Tina. Uh, she loves Stevie Nicks. It's one of her favorite people of all time. And uh, I had fun, but she really had fun. And that's what all matters to me. Um, I'm, I'm a good husband, man. I can't, I can't put anywhere. I love my wife to death. So, I love my kids to death, which is surprising because uh, there's no Vincent today. And uh, I want to say thank you guys. Vincent loves it when you guys say hi. Um, he, he has a blast. Um, he likes doing it. He loves doing thumbs up. He loves being goofy. Um, I don't know how many people have children that are, have autism. Um, but every day it can be a struggle sometimes. Um, some days are great. Some days we have no problems. He doesn't fight. He doesn't fuss. No, nothing. But when you're arguing with a 12 year old, that's the same size as you are and you try to discipline them, it can be hard sometimes. Uh, especially when he doesn't quite understand it. So, but thank you. Um, like I said, he loves it, and it means a world. It means a lot to him. It means a lot to me that you guys will take and just go, "Hi, ah, Vince." You know, it, it's it's fun. Thank you, thank you. And um, <clears throat> that being said, I'm going to break out my phone here. We're going to give uh, some rundowns on some thank yous. So they didn't give you thank yous last night. We're going to do some thank yous today. So, uh, Winner, you're awesome. Uh, Lone Swordsman, Warren, uh, Chris, Johnny, um, Simply, Daniel, Black Phoenix, um, Royce, uh, I, Way Out Toys. You, what are you doing? This in the... This is in the library. You read it, you buy it. Just say it. Just to put it back. I'm watching you. All right. Warren, uh, Newfie, Daniel, Tarek, Paulette, Maria, Sean. Uh, Maria, you're awesome. Um, so you. And uh, in, and I'm I'm still saying Maria. If you ever come across any uh, them uh, European uh, Secret Wars figures over there, I'm hoping that since they're in Europe, they might be a little cheaper than here in America. Let me know, man. Help a brother out. So, but I mean, thank you guys. You guys are all awesome. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna put something past the credits here. Um. And before I forget to say, uh, this is not my old school. I keep telling everybody this uh, that I've had the same copy of Rumors forever. Uh, this was a better copy I got. I think I sold off my old, old copy. So that's a better copy, but still an old copy. So, <clears throat> all right. Here's the rundown, as always. Every, Sat every Saturday, pff, I'm getting ahead of myself. Every Monday, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, we're bringing you the best in interviews from people from all walks of life. Uh, directors, writers, producers, whatever, you name it, we'll get them on the show. If I find them just a fun interview, I will interview them. So, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, Mondays, Group Therapy TV Podcast. Sci Fridays, every Sci Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you're watching it right now, 8 a.m. Saturday mornings, Saturday morning cereals. Uh, so, you know, that's a lot. A lot going on. So, and as always, the captain is currently working on his uh, first movie. Uh, I will be directing a segment in the upcoming movie, Amityville Aliens. Um, so, I'm not taking it any, any seriously at all. Uh, I'm working on a script right now, getting ready to cast and all that fun stuff. 
And now we're going to raise money. So I will be posting an Indiegogo to help me raise money to film my part of the movie, to hire my actors, uh, pay for food, props, all that fun stuff because that's not cheap. And uh, this is my first foray. So thank you, Don, if you're watching this. Uh, thank you for letting me do this. I appreciate the hell out of it. So, but thank you. And thank you all for watching. I uh, appreciate every one of you. Um, you are all awesome. You're all great. Um, you're fun. Like I said, you, you make Vince's day. Uh, you make my day. Saturday mornings, I love to, even if I can only be on here for a little bit, I love popping up and saying hi to you guys and getting the feedback. Um, so stay cool and uh, getting heartfelt here. So y'all take care. I'll see y'all there and the Captain out. Bye. This Saturday morning marked the first time that no cartoons aired on an American broadcast channel. The last channel still showing cartoons. Hold the plug. Cartoons were the dominant morning program from the 1960s to the 1980s. superpowers and watching over them from center neptune seven zark seven watching warning against surprise attack by alien galaxies from beyond space Young orphans protecting Earth's entire galaxy. Always five, acting as one. Dedicated, inseparable, invincible. Somewhere off the west coast of the United States, 900 fathoms beneath the surface of the sea, is this secret and extremely important world defense base. Center Neptune. One of Earth's most precious minerals is mined and refined down here. Vita Lumis. It's an amazing ore discovery that renews the worn out soils of Earth and other planets. Without this precious ore, nothing can be grown. And people in many galaxies will face starvation. To guard this vital base against attack by space pirates and alien enemies, is the huge responsibility of five incredible, highly specialized people called G-Force. Oh, I'm Seven Zark Seven, complex computerized coordinator for G-Force. Everything clears through me here at Center Neptune. I keep watch every minute, day and night, on each member of the G-Force team. I don't need sleep. I'm a, a robot, you know. <laughs> Some call me a guardian robot. Uh oh, there's an emergency. The cosmic space control informs me a mysterious UFO has been sighted. I've got it on my scanner. Yeah. It's a radio-controlled attack monster from Spectra, a very advanced planet in a hostile alien galaxy. My sensors indicate it's heading for one of the fortified vaults where our valuable Vita Lumis is stored. Vault number five, 
alien aircraft. Red alert, you have an intruder. and any aircraft units, stand ready, fire! want to steal our precious light aluminum. We give it freely to any planet that needs it. I'd better get G-Force on this right away. Come in, G-Force. Hot scan. Enter the tune. Call it. This is 7, Zark 7. Come in, Mark. Okay, ears on. 10-2, Zark. Assemble your team, Commander. I've located an invader from Spectra on my scanner. Proceed to point 13X, grid 40. I will now transmute you to full jet. Big test. Okay, transmute. Well, that's just one of the many conversion phases I control, but Mark the real leader of G4. And Princess is the only female member of the team. This big fellow is Tiny Harper. He pilots the command ship and assembles the crew. pay special attention to Princess. I really don't know just why. This is Keo. He's very special and different. He was manufactured, grown from a single embryonic cell in the laboratory. His speech is a little peculiar, but his powers are amazing. And finally, this is Jason. Very capable, but just a trifle eager and hot-headed sometimes. So emotional. I do wish he had solid-state circuitry like mine. Force members all have miniaturized cerebonic implants, which give them fantastic abilities beyond those of other humans. Orphans who have been trained almost since birth to develop those secret and mysterious powers. Even though they're so capable, I wish I could be with them on dangerous missions because I do worry. But 
I'm just an old stay-at-home stationary think tank. Hold your course, G-Force. You're right on target. Good, good, good. Uh, good, good, good. My bare hands. Cheop, you can't go after it all alone. It's from Spectra. This is the third time we've been invaded by them. Just let me get a laser bead on it. This will be their last attack. I believe that's what you said last time, Jason. Uh-oh. The invader has disappeared from my scanner. I'm afraid you're on your own now, team. Big Ten, Zark. I am breaking contact now, but I'll be on standby alert. Good luck and over. Good old reliable Zark says it's invaders from Planet Spectra again. Wonder what they'll look like this time, Mark? Probably two-headed. Well, they say two heads are better than one. Not on the same body. Hey, team, look! There's something down there! Uh, look, 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 ocean. We know it's the ocean. We're going for it! It may be attacking our underwater base. Nothing on the scanners, Mark. Not a sign of it. Mark, I think we should have stayed above. Gotta be above. Surface tiny. Alive? Yeah, it's alive with ugly aliens. Let's give it a laser blast. Dive at it, Tiny. Hold it. We can't destroy it yet. I can, believe me. Just let me get up. Look, Jason, it's only one attack vehicle. There may be more. We've got to follow it and find its base. We're gonna play tag. Isn't that fun, Tiny? What happened to the space monster? A thing like that can't just disappear. But the screen is blank. I wonder if I should wear glasses. Just for work. Uh oh, I'm getting something now. Call in G-Force. Space monster, hot skin. Big Ten, Dark. We read. <laughs> Ugly. It's a good thing we had ears on, Dark. Yes, Princess. You're lucky I always keep my sensors about me. I wonder if I need a joke. <laughs> it's headed for storage vault number seven. <laughs> Wipe out. You're not in charge, Keop. Keop's right. I say wipe it out. Hold it, Jason. For what? I think I know the answer. What's the question? You know why we haven't located its base? Because it's the base. That's pretty weird. I'll prove it if we can get inside. I spotted an open ventilator shaft in its flank. Yeah, I know, Keop. This isn't your bag. You'll get your chance later. Okay, Mark, let's try your kooky idea. Hey, if you don't mind, it's my turn. I'm going with Mark. Oh, lovey dovey, Marky Warky. Oh. Coordinate liftoff on three, Princess. Let's get him. Check the upper levels, Princess. I'll go below. I'll look for the phaser control. Careful, Princess. If you need help, sing out. Thanks, Commander, but watch your own step. 
on our tail? Fools. They'll be sorry they ever found us. They're powerless against our prismatic reflectors. Disintegrator ready. On target. Get set. Someone tempered with the prismatic refractor system. Check it out. I'll open the landing bay and let the Phoenix come aboard. The door. See, it's open, Keop. I wish they wouldn't do that. Now they're all in terrible danger. Oh, I can't take this strain. If they don't contact me pretty soon, I'm afraid I'm going to have an electrode failure. No sign of the Vita Loomis. I thought this whole operation was nowhere. I'm sure this is the base. We just haven't looked hard enough. Oh, bad news. Aha! So Earth sends children against us, against the most powerful spaceship from Crab Nebulae. <laughs> We're getting tired of your invasions. Uh, pain in neck. We've got to use the rotor force. Jet spiral on minus two. Prepare to surrender yourselves, children. Our supreme ruler will be highly amused when we bring you back to our galaxy. Hate to disappoint your ruler, but you can take him this message just for laughs. Bug off! among the enemy, but they'll be up again shortly. Incompetent fool, you have failed your mission. You know what this means? G-Force possesses strange powers. I must report you to the Great One. We await your decision, O oh, Luminous One. The Space Terrapin has outlived its usefulness. It must be destroyed. Your word is law, and it shall be done, O oh, Great Galactic Ruler. We will need much deadlier weapons and more brilliant strategy to overcome Earth and its G-Force defenders. Yes, great light of wisdom. Instruct Commander Gorak to abandon the Terrapin and return with what he has in the escape ship. I will order the space Terrapin destroyed immediately. The Spectre Commander is escaping in the nose cone. Goodbye, G-Force and your whirlwind pyramid. Get to the Phoenix. And fast. This thing's gonna blow. We're all aboard. Hit it, Tiny. Had only a few seconds to escape. If they have no other alternative, they'll have to transmute into the fiery phoenix for extreme emergencies only. 
that requires full use of all their ceremonic powers. It's a last resort, their ultimate defense. Our fuel pod's jammed in the hatch. Give it full power. Break it loose. Okay, Tiny, try to blast off. We don't want to go to the fiery Phoenix unless we have to. Okay, we tried. All members of G-Force prepare to transmute to the fiery Phoenix. I'll take over, Tiny. Modulator set, fusion on. I won't go home in disgrace after all. <laughs> What's that coming out of the clouds? Well, I almost had total digital readout failure, but G-Force made it. Mark activated the subatomic generator perfectly to transmute them into the fiery phoenix. Then they can recover the Vitalumus from the ocean where it fell. In 24 hours, they'll resume their normal shapes and be ready for their next assignment. And I'll always be here to coordinate and keep a watchful eye on them. I don't know why I worry about G-Force so much. If anybody can take care of themselves, they can. But I guess even a little robot is human enough to love his family. Oh dear, I think that's another emergency already. It's a good thing I don't need sleep. Thank you.